Welcome inside historic Cardines Field in beautiful Newport, Rhode Island. It is the Newport Goals pregame show on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Tonight, the Newport Goals will play host to the visiting Danbury Westerners. I'm Quinton Pelzel, and for the Danbury Westerners, they're coming off of a 7-4 loss against the, against the Upper Valley Nighthawks a couple of days ago. The Westerners now have lost seven of their last 10 games. As for the Gulls, they have won five in a row, and they're trending in the opposite direction as the Westerners. They were able to pick up a 9-1 win against the Keene Swamp Bats last night. Santosh got him dazzled over six shutout innings, picked up his first win of the year. And Matt Shark had three RBIs. Trent Farquhar, two RBIs as well. We got interviews with players and coaches, so don't go anywhere. First pitch right around the corner as well on the NECBL Broadcast Network in the Newport Gulls pregame show. Welcome back to the Newport Goals pregame show. I'm Quinton Pelzel. Alongside me is the Newport Goals catcher, Brian Brecker. And Brian, I want to talk about the season you had at Michigan State this past year. Batted over 300. You were offensive leader in almost every category for Michigan State this past year. What went well for you? And talk to me about um, your mindset throughout the season. Um, yeah, this year was a lot of learning for me. Um, had a lot of people in my life that gave me a lot of good insight, a lot of growing, and just learning about my approach, learning about myself, being true to who I am, and um, and letting that play out on the field. And here in the NECBL, got off to a little bit of a slow start, but over the last five games, you're hitting over 300. Um, what has the what has the transition been like for you going to the NECBL? Is it the wood bat, or did you make any adjustments with your mechanics? Uh, talk to me about what the difference has been over the last week or so. Yeah, baseball's just going to have those those highs and lows sometimes. Um, just sticking to your approach should hopefully level out that curve. And I mean, it just happens in baseball, you know. So hopefully, um, staying consistent with your approach, staying consistent with the work every day, and then hopefully it'll pay off every and then. The and I spoke with Jacob Burley a couple days ago about being a catcher in the NECBL, or really any summer baseball team for that matter, trying to learn the pitcher's tendencies, learning the game plan, and then also kind of knowing um, the opposing hitters and how to get them out. How has that transition been for you? How have you been learning these pitchers' tendencies? Um, how's that going for you? Yeah, there's definitely a learning curve when you're starting to catch a lot of new guys for the first time. Um, so communication is really important, just seeing what they like in certain counts, um, talking to pitching coaches, uh, see scouting reports and other guys. Um, just communication is really big, especially early on, trying to see what guys like, what they don't like, when they like to throw it, and um, just working together and uh, trying to have some success. And last question, Brian, this is your second season now with the Gulls after having a really good year last year. Uh, why did you come back in Newport and uh, choose the Gulls as your summer baseball team this year? Um, I mean, Chuck treats his players awesome. He really takes care of, uh, takes care of us all here. Um, just the family environment's awesome. Good league, get to play some good ball. Um, host families are awesome, so it's just it's hard to turn down Newport. It's awesome. Thank you so much, Brian. Appreciate it. Good luck tonight as well. You can catch Brian Brecker batting cleanup in the starting lineup tonight for the Newport Goals. We'll be back with more on the Newport Goals pregame show. Welcome back to the Newport Goals pregame show. Quinton Pelzel here alongside Santosh Gautam, the player of the game from last night's game. Goals picked up a 9-1 win. You had six shutout innings in that game. Talk to me about what worked well for you in that matchup against the Keene Swamp Bats. Uh, I was just trying to fill up the zone because I know I got a great defense behind me, and I was just able to do just that. Like I think I finished the game with like under 70 pitches in six innings, so can't ask for much more than that. And uh, on the season, 20 innings now. I think you've given up only two runs. You have an ERA under one. What has been the success, or what has been the reason for your success here in the NECBL against a really, really some tough hitters that you're going up against? Uh, like I just said, it's mostly like knowing that I have a great defense behind me, so I'm able to just go and attack the hitters, knowing that my defense will make plays. And I can pitch kind of free, knowing that the offense is going to go score runs no matter what. So. It's just kind of everyone doing their job. And you do have one luxury as a pitcher here, pitching with the goals. You have your college catcher and Jacob Burley. He obviously caught you last night. How, how great is it to pitch to someone who you know, who knows your tendencies, who knows what you like to go with in certain situations? I mean, just having him as a catcher is phenomenal. He's a phenomenal catcher, but also like the chemistry that we've built over the last two years. I mean, he knows. He knows me better than I know myself. Like so, like I'll throw a pitch. I want another pitch, but he'll call something else, and I'll throw it because I trust him. And if I don't 
trust him, honestly. It has backfired on me more than it has worked. So, I mean, I just like to trust him. He knows, like I said, he knows me better than I know myself. And just one last question. Um, for scouting reports in the NECBL, I know it's probably pretty limited. Do you look at those beforehand? Do you know the type of hitters that you're going up against? Do you know how to attack them? Or is it kind of just, you know, here's my fastball, try to hit it, or, you know what, I feel like I'm going with a curveball here in this situation. What do you know about these hitters going into your matchups? Uh, nothing else more than when their name gets announced <laughs> right before they come up to the plate. So really, nothing for me. I just try to attack with my strengths. And if I see something mid at bat, like they're on a pitch or like their swing path, maybe I'll adjust to that. But beforehand, before the game now. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Thank you so much. And uh, continued success. That was Santosh Gautam, right-hand pitcher for the Newport Coles, back with more on the Newport Coles pregame show. And we're back here on the Newport Coles pregame show. I'm Jose Rodriguez. This is Trent Farquhar with me. Trent, last night, two hits, two RBIs, how big is contributing, not for your team, but like the whole team in general with the rosters? No, it was good. I uh, had a good night last night. I was trying to help the team win. Uh, obviously, a couple knocks went my way, uh, so that was good to see, and it was good to see us get uh, double-digit double digit hits last night as a team. So, uh, yeah, offense is rolling. Looking to keep it going today. The first 17 game in the season, 14-3 and three record. How important is... To, um, to start in a high note. Yeah, it just gives a lot of confidence, especially playing a lot of uh, divisional games, uh, playing those teams early and kind of seeing what they're about, what we're about, and getting the leg up on them. And, yeah, playing great baseball and uh, just gives us a lot of confidence moving forward. What is um, your preparation before the game, if you're in the starting lineup or not? Like, if you're not in the starting lineup, how you prepare for a big spot during the game? Yeah, so just keeping the same routine, honestly, it's the biggest thing. You want to stay consistent uh, as much as possible, and that way uh, our results become as consistent as possible. So just sticking to my same process, going through my same routine, whether I'm playing or not, uh, taking I.O. and everything. So, yeah, just preparing like uh, I'm going to get in in the later later stages if, it, if they need me. Um, so, yeah, just staying consistent. You guys faced them a few, few weeks ago in Connecticut. You guys lost 11-6, to a heartbroken loss. How will that change tonight, hopefully, knowing that you have um, the Gulls fans supporting you. Yeah, it's nice always uh, playing at home, especially being more comfortable with the home service and stuff like that. They uh, they swung the bats real well against the last time, so I know our pitchers are going to be dialed in tonight, uh, throwing strikes and keeping them off the bases. So, yeah, just looking to change that and hopefully get a few more knocks than last time too. Uh, I know they walked just a few times, so just hit the strikes, take the balls, and uh, everything will go our way tonight. Trent, thanks for the time. Thank you. Well, we will be right back on the Newport Gulls pregame show. We're back here on the Newport Goals pregame show. I'm joined now by, baseball, by Newport Goals baseball operation, Mike Falcone. Falcone, the team, 14 and three. How how well and how happy you, you are of the, 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 this team? Oh, beyond beyond happy for them thus far with their start. Uh, Coach Holbrook and the rest of the staff have done a great job, really blending these guys together. Um, but it's not how you start; it's how you finish. So uh, it's exciting, and I'm proud of them. But got a long way to go what um what is the process for you to getting to these players from um the university and college and coming over here to play um summer ball here in the NSCBL for the Newport goals yeah so the the process begins right after this season gets done even before um and the process starts really with the players that are here and the relationships that are being built with the college coaches uh with our front office general manager chuck pava chris patsos those guys have been doing this for over 20 years now they have some really valuable and long-standing relationships with some of the best colleges and universities in the country so those are our people that we lean on um various coaches that have these programs that feed into our roster if you look perennially where we have a couple of Vanderbilt guys, Louisville, Michigan State, you know, we, we been, have a lot of guys that come from those same universities because of what we're doing here as an organization. How tough is your job, not just in the in season, but also in the off season, trying to get the right players? Uh, well, I deal uh, mostly with the, uh, the ballpark and the game day ops and our sponsors, our host families, getting all the, the internship staff and putting those pieces together. Um, you know, not, uh, not, hard it, you know, it's challenging for sure it's a lot of moving pieces but I enjoy it uh, I'm super grateful to to be a part of the organization and love working towards this right here we work uh, we work nine months of the year 
for a three months, maybe less season. So uh, this is where we can kind of enjoy it. Um, it's still a lot, of hard, a lot of hard work and it's pretty hectic, but we can see the fruits of our labor here in the summer, which is great to see. So some kids are joining late because of the College World Series and the playoff. How do you think they make the transition quicker? Uh, well, it's been great that a lot of our guys uh, have been playing. You know, those who are in the College World Series and playing in the Super Regionals and such have continued to keep their uh, their talent level at a high level. It's not like they're sitting back and, uh, you know, hanging out at the pool or going on vacation. Yeah. You know, they're still in it. They're in a very competitive environment. So that environment translates here very well and creates a, a great atmosphere. Um, gets the guys working hard and everybody's blended together really well no matter if they were here on June 3rd or they just arrived here uh, over the past week or so um, which also uh, uh, helps is that we have a lot of returning guys our most recent player Nelson Berkwich he was with us in 2001 so he's used to this uh, this field this organization a lot of players here so I think that helps a lot as well uh, one of you of the former Newport goals who, who's now an alum made it um, to the big league roster th this past month. How, how impressed, because we have a lot of goals who make it to the major league. I believe more like 20? 30, 31. 31. 31. So. Um, that, the 31st player was Connor Kaiser. He was a shortstop here in 2016, actually the year that I interned for the, the, the club. Um, and it's really tremendous to see him uh, and all the Gulls alumni work their way up throughout the, the minor leagues and then hopefully get that major league call. Uh, Justin Henry, Henry Malloy has now made the, the Futures League game in, uh, um, in Seattle for the All-Star game. So uh, that's so fun to see where they started uh, in college, come with us in the summertime, and then see their progression through the, the minors and eventually to the majors is a testament to what Chuck and Chris do, recruiting, and these players really, uh, the hard work that they put in, not only on the field, but off the field. And it, it's really fun to watch. How much credit would you give Chuck and Chris for the for the players and everything? Well, players, I mean, that's that's their uh, that, that's their domain. That's what they uh, focus their time and energy on throughout the off season. Uh, of course, we work together um, on the op side of things, but um, that, that's really their their specialty. They've been doing it for for quite a number of years, and the industry has changed, and they've changed with it, which is really impressive um, because. Every year the players get different, the schools, and there's challenges that you have and obstacles you have to overcome. Um, but I credit them um, you know, 10 out of 10 uh, to, to the players and their development. And you know, you gotta give it to the coaching staff too, which Chuck and Chris put together. So they got a great group of guys uh, on the staff, great group of guys on the roster, and uh, you know, I can't ask for much more than that. Mike Falcone, thanks for the, thank you for the time. Absolutely. That was Mike Falcone, Newport Goals Baseball Operation. We will be right back on the Newport Goals pregame show. Welcome to Cardines Field as the pregame show is over. The players are just about ready for first pitch here in Newport, Rhode Island, as it is a game between the Newport Goals and the Danbury Westerners, the second iteration between these two teams. The first one going the way of the Danbury Westerners, one of the three losses that the Newport Goals have this season. The Goals have a five game winning streak. They are 13 and three on the season. And we'll see if the Goals can keep up that winning streak tonight. Quinton Pelzel along with Jose Rodriguez, Kyle DeSantis as well, the play by play voice of the Danbury Westerners here tonight. You can see Quinton, Jose and Kyle. Kyle, we'll start with you. 
The Danbury Westerners did not play last night, but they did play a couple of days ago. They took a loss against the Upper Valley Nighthawks, 7-4. to four. And for the Westerners, they've lost seven of their last ten. Yeah, well, exactly, at least when it comes to the North Division. Not necessarily Danbury Strong, so they've yet to get a win in five games against the Northern Division opponents. But as the case it was for Upper Valley, a lot of the things that Connor Farrell's been talking about, they have only won one game on the road in the Westerners. It's been limiting that big inning, and when Garrett Pike gets a grand slam, it's kind of hard to come back with that eventually. Again, fell by three, as you mentioned, Quinton. Yeah, one of the three losses, actually, for the goals, I was just saying, was against these Danbury Westerners, and one of the main reasons why is because they launched home runs in that first matchup against the goals. What are you expecting to see from these two teams tonight? Well, I feel like, again, Danbury, they're going to try to keep that same approach. Again, the home runs, they have five that first game. Probably not going to hit five tonight again, looking at the dimensions at Cardines Field. But again, continuing that approach, Connor Farrell called this lineup dangerous, as we have it here on our screen. Yeah, how about this starting lineup? And Kyle, why don't you read that off for us? Yeah, leading off the shortstop for Danbury and Javon Hernandez in the second baseman, Joey Rubin, behind him at second. And Bobby Zamarslak, the left fielder, bats third. In the cleanup spot, the first baseman, Luke Boynton, and then Roman DiGiacomo, the DH, bats fifth. Before the right fielder, Harrison Feinberg, at six. 7, 8, and 9 for the visiting Danbury Westerners. The third baseman, William Cook, making his Danbury debut. The catcher, Daniel Labrador. And the center fielder, Jacoby Davis. And on the mound, Jose is the left-hander, Adam Marr, getting his second start of the season out of the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. Yeah, um, it's going to be really interesting. This is first home game this season for him. The last two times that he pitches was in the road. A good win against Vermont, pitching seven innings giving up one earned runs and four hit um, against Nash North Shore Navigators on June 18, 4-3 four th four loss. He did not come up with a decision, but two innings, one hit, one, two, two innings, one run, five hit, excuse me. So I, so my prediction for um, Mar, maybe five, five, six solid inning in his first um, home game of the season. Yeah, he pitched really well in that first start of the year against the Vermont Mountaineers. And the Mountaineers right now, they lead the league in hitting, and he totally shut them down in Vermont. So we'll see if he can keep that going tonight against the Westerners who come into this game. They are about the middle of the pack in terms of team batting average, batting 232. But atop of the league right now is Javon Hernandez, and he'll dig in for his first bat. He is batting 349, which is tops in the NECBL as Adam Marr is set. We are just about ready to go here from Cardine's Field as Marr will begin out of the stretch. And the first pitch to Hernandez is a bunt tapped in front of home plate in the middle of nobody. And that's going to be an infield single for Javon Hernandez and the Danbury Westerners off to a good start. They've yeah. got the leadoff base runner on. I mean, yeah, thinking of Javon Hernandez, a very speedy guy. You just mentioned he leads the league in batting average at 349, able to put that one down towards the third base line and ultimately beats it out to first. He's got and leads Danbury in stolen bases with six. Again, now the leading base runner on. Yeah, six stolen base and, and nine attempts. Caught stealing three times so far during the season. Gulisigam holding him on at first base as Marr has a terrific pickoff move and we see it right there as Hernandez is back in at first. Defensively for the Newport goals, Slade Alford, Colby Branch, Luke Beckstein, and Sam Kulisigam left to right on the infield. And then on the outfield, Nico Brini, Anthony D'Onofrio, and Tyler Hare. Another pickoff play. Kulisigam goes down to get it. Hernandez is back in. Joseph Rubin, the batter for the Westerners, right-handed hitter. So he digs in. Middle infield and double play depth. First pitch coming in at 6.33. Pitch is going to be in there for strike. 0-1 says home plate umpire Brian McGugan. Stephen Kalenda and Greg Andriozzi are on the base paths. Ruben playing second base tonight for the Westerners. Marr with a long pause. The 0-1. Swing and a miss. Fastball coming in at 87 miles an hour. Count is now 0-2. Goals coming off of a win last night in Keene. They won that one 9-1. to one. Matt Shark had three RBIs. Trent Farquhar had two RBIs. Both of those players not in the lineup tonight for the goals. Another pickoff play. Hernandez is back in. Still 0-2. Goals coming to this game 14-3, leading the Coastal Division. And for the Westerners, they are 6-10, third place in the West. 
five one last inning for the goals to put an icing on the cake. And that keen game back in the ninth as that one is fouled away. Count stays 0-2. Also at the plate again, Joey Rubin that you mentioned out of Rollins College. He's someone who's starting to work his way into the lineup again. Was a later addition, was with Rollins College. They were in the D2 National Championship. And he's been a good middle infield guy. He can play from third, short. He's at second today. First time the goals have seen him this year. And Marr punches him out. Looked like a breaking ball on the inside corner. Marr gets his first strike out. And there's one away. Now coming to the plate will be Bobby Zamarzalak, who is playing in left field tonight for the Westerners, and he has a ton of power. First in the NECBL in home runs with four, and he ranks first in the NECBL in OPS, well over a thousand. So Mars got to be careful with him as the first pitch fastball up high, one and zero, oh. and batting 310 as well in the season. He he has a little bit of everything. Here's the 1 0. Swing and a miss. Count is now 1 and 1. Zamarzalak from Maryland, drafted in the 40th round in the 2019 draft by the Baltimore Orioles. Opted to play college ball, which is the reason why he is here playing in the NECBL. The 1 1. That is in there for a strike, 1 and 2. Also looking at Zamarzalak. He's going to be going to Georgia Tech for his fifth year next spring, transferred. Out of Maryland, Maryland's also had a few former Westerners, Nick LaRusso, Luke Schlager, two guys that are going to be up on the name of the draft boards probably in the next coming weeks. A lot of great players playing for the Terrapins. Mar with a long pause. There goes Hernandez, pitches in the dirt, and Proto down to second, not in time. Ryan Proto behind the plate for the goals tonight as Javon Hernandez steals stolen base, number seven on the season for him. And... The Westerners have a first inning base runner in scoring position. Hernandez, a very speedy runner, as we've talked about a few times. At 33 this past spring, Jacksonville State, his first season playing D1 ball. Samarzalak with 12 runs batted in, and that breaking ball is on the inside corner. Strike three, two away. Back to back strikeouts looking for Adam Marr. And now the batter will be Luke Boynton. Yeah, two, two quick outs, two strikeouts by Mar after, after giving up an infield hit. And especially both of those strikeouts, it's Mar working on that low inside corner again, Danbury. They've been, the hitters at least very patient with their selection and both times been able to slide it right in there. First pitch is going to be low. Count is 1-0. First four batters of the game have been right-handed hitters against Mar as the Westerners trying to put as many right-handers in there against the lefty from the University of Massachusetts, Dartmouth. Division three school, just up the road, the 1-0. Nice stop by Proto, keeping Hernandez right where he is at second, and it's 2-0. Also talking about the Danbury lineup as a whole, you mentioned the right-handed hitters, only three throughout the entire position player roster including William Cook, who's making his debut tonight. Jacoby Davis, also a lefty batter, as is Jason Claiborne. Claiborne, another outfielder, though, not in the lineup as of right now. Possibly see him later in the game. The 2-0 is high, 3-0, as on deck is Roman DiGiacomo. He's the DH tonight for the Westerners. Goals pitching staff. Best in the league as that one is outside ball four. Walking to first is Boynton, the second base runner of the inning. Boynton's now to a six game on base streak with that walk. He came in also five and has a five game hit streak riding into Cardine's field as well. Runners first and second. Now it's Roman DiGiacomo. Pitch is off the end of the bat, roll to the right side. Beckstein's got to hurry, flips the first, and he gets the out. Nice play by Luke Beckstein, the second base spin from Northeastern. And that'll do it for the goals here in the top of the first. No runs on one hit, two runners left. Goals coming to bat here at Cardine's Field when we return. The NEC.
KCBL's broadcast network brings all of the action right to your home every night. Available on your desktop, laptop, mobile device, as well as your Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Android TV device. Enjoy single-day passes for just $8, purchase a weekly subscription for $20, a monthly pass for $40, or an all-season pass for $80. Head to watch.necbl.com for more information and for a full streaming schedule. On Sunday, July 23rd, the NECBL's best will head to historic Fraser Field in Lynn, Massachusetts for the 2023 NECBL All-Star Game presented by Metro Credit Union. Don't miss the marquee event of the summer. Visit ASG23.NECBL.com for more information. Back at Cardines Field, Quinton Pelzel, Kyle DeSantis, and Jose Rodriguez with you as the Danbury Westerners went scoreless in the top of the first. The goals will come to bat for the first time. Anthony D'Onofrio will lead it off, followed by Colby Branch. Sam Kulisigum will be batting third. Brian Brecker batting cleanup in the five spot. Slade Alford batting sixth is Luke Beckstein. Seventh, Tyler Hare. Eighth, Ryan Proto. In the, and in the ninth spot, will be Nico Brini. He's out in left field, and Kyle on the mound for the Westerners is a good one, a lefty, Braden Quinn. Lefty in Braden Quinn, the Week 3 NECBL Pitcher of the Week, his last time out. Game one of a doubleheader back on June 21st, a week ago, against the Sanford Mainers, though he did get the loss. He had a, a pretty solid stat line, I'll say. Complete game, seven innings pitch, seven inning doubleheaders here in the NECBL. Gave up four hits, one and run, which was a solo shot, two walks. 14 strikeouts. Yeah, tough loss in that game against the Mainers. Only giving up one run. You strike out 14, but you get the loss. That is brutal. If you're Braden Quinn, he'll look to have, he'll look to get a little bit more run support tonight. As here is D'Onofrio, and he lifts one out to left. Easy play for Zamarzalak, and there is one away. So good start for Braden Quinn. Now stepping to the plate will be Colby Branch. The freshly committed Georgia Bulldog just announced that yesterday. So he'll be joining goal teammate Slade Alford in committing to Georgia. As this is the time of year where a lot of these players who are in the portal, they will commit. Very exciting time of year for these players. As you saw the defense for the Westerners, Will Cook, Javon Hernandez, Joey Rubin and Luke Boynton left to right on the infield. Bobby Zamarzalak, Jacoby Davis, Harrison Feinberg left to right in the outfield as that one is fouled away. And then behind the plate is Dan Labrador and on the mound, we've talked about him a lot. Braden Quinn. Quinn also can be someone who could throw a lot of pitches, go deep into games. He's thrown 50 or more in all three appearances so far. The you know, two top foul up the third baseline. Quinn stands at 6'3", 220 from the University of Connecticut, and he will be facing teammate Nico Brini. Brini also from the University of Connecticut, so that should be a fun matchup, a lefty-lefty matchup there. The 0-2 up high. The count is 1-2. and two. Quinn last pitched eight days ago. That was that game against the Mainers where he struck out 14. Just an incredible game for Quinn. Rising Jr., lefty, deals, check swing, he went around, strike three, first strikeout for Quinn, and there's two away. Yeah, he was too anxious on that with two strikes. Swung out of everything. You gotta be selective what you wanna swing or else that won't happen. Yeah, nasty back foot slider there from Quinn. So there's two away, and now up steps to the plate, the switch hitter batting right, Sam Kulisigam. Kulisigam batting 342. And that pitch low, 1-0. and oh. Another thing to note, seven batters total between both teams that come to the plate. And you have three of them being punch outs. Yeah, a lot of strikeouts early. 
definitely expect that from Quinn, but Marr, he's more of a contact pitcher. Doesn't strike out too many guys, not overpowering, but he did rack up two strikeouts looking in that opening inning as Kulisigam with a check swing foul. And the count is two and one to Kulisigam, the second team All-American. Comes into this game sporting, like Jose said, 342 batting average, home run, nine runs batted in. Foul tipped in the catcher's glove, strike two, two and two now. Kulisigam, last time he was here, hit a grand slam. Swing and a miss, strike three, that'll do it for the goals here in the bottom of the first. Good inning by Braden Quinn as he retires the goals one, two, three. We'll head to the second, no score here at Cardines. You're watching the NECBL Broadcast Network. Live at home and gives her the care and support she has to have. Pace has been a real lifesaver for her and for me. Contact Pace, the statewide health plan for aging well at home. I'm turning dreams into reality. In the lab with the formula and chemistry. The memories spark and motivate and make the industry shake. We put the bars in the place. I'm talking one, one chance at best. Yes, painting pictures with the culture, keep the pressure fresh. Took the camera, with the drum of passion, never rest. Freedom is a teacher under pressure, now we bless. Yeah, it's one on one shot, now the future is yours. Go! First thing. Bruce Bolt was quality, the consistency, knowing that when I take them out, they're going to be the same every time. Uh, and the second was to, to be able to, to see kids all over the country wearing you know, the gloves that I designed. That's one of the coolest parts of this. There's a look at home plate umpire, Brian McGugan through the first inning. It's called two strikeouts looking as we are in the top of the second. Quinton Pelzel, Jose Rodriguez, and Kyle DeSantis with you. Adam Marr back to the mound for his second inning of work. Sidestepped a couple base runners in that opening inning, but was able to strike out two batters. And then get Roman DiGiacomo to ground out to Luke Beckstein to end the inning. Another right-handed hitter, Harrison Feinberg. Will swing at the first pitch and lift one high in the air to deep left field. Back goes Brini, still running back towards the fence. Leaps and he makes the grab just in front of the fence. One away. Nice catch by the University of Connecticut product, Nico Brini. Wow, what a nice catch there. And left center field, he took away an extra base hit. If he didn't caught that, that would be at least a double right away. And even so, for Feinberg, he was doing really well in BP hitting, I believe, at least five out of the park here at Cardine. So another representative with that shot. That one is low, 1-0. To Will Cook, third baseman for the Westerners. Cook played his college ball this past year at the University of Louisville. 1-0. Foul back, one and one. Cook's dad, Jay Cook, was drafted in the 15th round of the 1993 Major League Baseball draft by the, by the Boston Red Sox out of high school. From Dayton, Ohio, Will Cook is from, and that one's fouled away, one and two. And even as well for Cook, it was actually almost a full circle moment for him. He played with the Wareham Gateman earlier this month in the Cape Cod League. He actually went to the workout day where they went to Fenway Park. He was able to take batting practice, do some I.O. with the team. So wow, how almost about that? a full circle moment for him. Must have been a terrific experience for him. That must be surreal. That one is lifted high in the air to right center field. D'Onofrio should have room. Now Tyler Hare will call him off, and he'll make the grab. Two away. Two, two quick outs in the outfield by Moore. And Moore. After, in the first inning, two strikeouts, now two fly ball out. Mar inducing some soft contact early on. Daniel Labrador will dig in. Does not wear a batting glove on that top hand as he takes the ball low, 1-0. 
Has one on his left hand, though. From Stetson University. Mar kicks and deals, fouled away. Got out in front. That breaking ball from Mar, it's one and one. One thing you really can't say against Danbury, they are putting the ball in play. That's two big fly balls off of the bat of Feinberg and Cook Labrador, another one, even though it curved foul. The one one, and that one is a breaking ball in there for a strike, one and two. So Mar looking for a one, two, three inning here in the second. Overcast skies here at Cardines. There was some rain in the forecast, but looks like that has subsided. That's another one pulled foul by Labrador. Still one and two. Especially for Labrador, the main thing, at least for him, that it's been very visible at the plate when it gets those sliders, those breaking pitches way out in front of it. We've seen it a few times after Mahler's been continuing to pound the zone with it. See what he goes with here, the one, two. Nice take by Labrador, two and two. For Marr, he is making his return to the NACBL, played last year for the Muskrats. Finished with a 4.41 earned run average. A two, two pitch. Swung on and missed, strike three. Got Labrador swinging three strikeouts through the first two innings for Marr. Well, at the bottom of the second, no score here at Cardines. You're watching the NECBL Broadcast Network. The chase for the Faye Vincent Senior Cup begins on Monday, July 31st, when the 2023 New England League playoffs will get underway. This year's postseason will feature an eight-team bracket with three rounds of best-of-three series to determine the league champion. Whether you're an island resident or planning a summer getaway, the fastest way to get to the Cape and Islands is by taking the New England League's preferred partner, the Steamship Authority Ferry. Visit SteamshipAuthority.com for more information. Fans, the NECBL's broadcast network brings all of the action right to your home every night. Available on your desktop, laptop, mobile device, as well as your Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Android TV device. Enjoy single-day passes for just $8. Purchase a weekly subscription for $20, a monthly pass for $40, or an all-season pass for $80. Head to watch.necbl.com for more information and for a full streaming schedule. Back at Cardine's Field on this Wednesday evening between the Newport Gulls and the Danbury Westerners. Still no score as we welcome you inside the broadcast booth. And Kyle, through the first inning and a half here, both of these pitchers playing extremely well. You got Marr with three strikeouts through two innings. Quinn had two strikeouts in his first inning. What has allowed them to be so successful early on? Well, for Marr, it's kind of been a difference, at least between both sides, where for Marr, it's been more the location game, working that low inside part of the plate, getting those calls against the righty batters that the Danbury lineup is full of. In the case of Quinn, so far, two strikeouts, both swinging Branch and Kula Singham to end the bottom of the first. Yeah, he's got a pretty wipeout, breaking ball, slider, slurve type pitch that he throws. Also throws the fastball at 90 miles an hour there. Right-handed hitter, Brian Brecker, Slate Alford, and Luke Beckstein coming up for the Gulls here as that one is fouled away. And the count is one and one. Had a chance to talk to Brian before the game. Talked about his return to the Gulls and why he wanted to come back and play for the Gulls. And for him, it was a no-brainer. I mean, playing in Newport in the summertime with this team, getting to be with the guys. Gulls have certainly loved to have him anchor the middle of that lineup. Had a great year at Michigan State this past year, and he's just looking to keep getting better and better, stay within himself. As the one two is high and tight, two and two. Newport, a great city. It really is, especially in the summertime. I mean, how can you beat Newport? So many great places to go. Can't even count on one hand how many beaches there are. Swung on and missed strike three, so Quinn with three straight strikeouts now, all swinging, and there's one away here in the bottom of the second. 
There's that slider again, that back foot slider that he loves to throw to righties on a two strike count and it has been doing him wonders so far. Now it's Slade Alford, Newport goal, third baseman. As he swings and misses, there's another slider and it's 0-1. They swung out too early on that pitch. He needs to time it up. Yeah. I think Alford might have been looking for a fastball there. Yeah, it was like a kind of like a breaking ball. He had some movement on that pitch. There's another slider in there for a strike, 0-2, and, and Quinn right now, he is picking up right where he left off in his last start against the Mainers, where he had 14 strikeouts, one, in, one run given up over seven innings as Alford bloops one into shallow right, and that is gonna fall for a base hit right in front of Feinberg. Joey Rubin also was racing out there from his second base spot, but it was placed perfectly by Alford, and the first hit of the game for the Gulls. Let's see if Luke, Bla Blake, Luke Blakeston could keep the rally going. Beckstein now the batter from Northeastern University. He's a Husky. He'll dig in and he'll take a ball low, one to know. You mentioned that Beckstein is a Northeastern Husky, as is Harrison Feinberg, where the Alford single blooped in front of him. Both teammates on a Huskies team that Ended up making it to the regional round. Is it not at large bid? Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of really special players on that team. Avon Cabral, also a pitcher for the Newport Goals. He's actually away at uh, USA Team Nationals along with Dakota Jordan. So getting an opportunity to represent your country playing baseball, it's gonna be a terrific experience for everyone involved, especially Avon Cabral and Dakota Jordan who Earlier this year, Jordan was the goal's best player, the hottest hitter, leading the league in batting average, and goals have been without him for about a week now, and they haven't really skipped a beat. They've won five in a row. As it is now a 2-1 pitch to Luke Beckstein with Alford still at first. Quinn from the stretch, breaking ball that is just off the corner, bent around the strike zone, and it's three and one. Tried to, again, go back door with that slider, bend it over that outer corner, couldn't get the break. Yeah, we don't have the statistics on his pitch usage, but I would imagine he throws that slider about as much as he throws that fastball. Normally for pitchers, they like to throw that fastball more. It's more of like a 60-40 or 70-30, but I would say for Quinn, it's more of a 50-50. Interesting as well, he has both a curveball and a slider, so you get that mixed in things that Makes it even harder for the hitters at the plate. Yeah, you can see why he has been so successful early on. Pickoff play to first. Alford oh, is balk. back in. They it's call a it a balk. This is what happened his last time out. He did get called for a balk, and that one was Quinn. It's almost where that left foot, he kind of picks it up a little bit. It's more that it's a part of its windup, but in the case of some of the umpires, they can call it a balk, and now it's a runner on second. And now, just like that, the goals have runners in scoring position and looking to score first. Yeah, it could be a costly mistake for Quinn, but I mean, I can never tell with these lefty-handed pitchers when they, when they step over to first as Beckstein pops up into medium center. Davis is under it. Alford really not even trying to tag up as that ball was not deep enough. There's two away as Davis puts it away. And now the batter will be Tyler Hare. But going back to that balk, I mean, you know, you can show me 10 different moves. I'm just, I would just guess, honestly. I really don't know what's a balk, what's yeah. not, and what umpires see, and when they call balks, when they don't. But it's, it's got to be just a really, really tough situation for an umpire. I mean, making that split second move, and for pitchers, a lot of these left handed pitchers get away with box a lot of the time. and a lot of people don't. I think, I, for me, it's just really subjective, yeah. honestly. Sometimes it's really hard to see. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So Tyler Hare took a first pitch, breaking ball for a strike, 0 and 1. Set the shortstop Hernandez playing behind Slade Alford at short, trying to keep him close as there is a curveball in there for a strike. 0 and 2 to Tyler Hare. Here, I got to protect the play here with two strikes on him. 
Hare with two home runs on the season. The 0-2 is hitting the left field. That is going to be in the shallow left for a base hit. Alford rounds third. He'll score easily as the throw from Zamarzlak goes into second. And on at first with an RBI single is Tyler Hare. And the goals lead 1-0. That balk really hurt, hurt the pitcher as the goal sco score first. Tried to go outside with the breaking ball, and it was a slow line out of the contact to begin with, and then the grass as well also slowing it down as it just got past Hernandez. Marzlak really couldn't throw home if he wanted to. one nothing goals. Yeah, and I mentioned too, Hernandez was kind of playing more up the middle, holding on Alford, and I think if Hernandez plays in his normal spot, if there's a ground ball in the hole, there's a base hit, placed it perfectly. Ryan Proto is on, back-to-back -back singles for the goals here with two outs. Probably Quinn is still in his mindset of that bug that he did that cost him the run. So probably he, that was his, what he's thinking right now, that bug that he committed it. Because after that, two or three straight hits, including a run for the goals. So now all of a sudden the goal is starting to put that slider slash curveball in play and starting to get positive results. So now here is that pitching matchup, pitcher versus hitter matchup that we talked about. Braden Quinn from UConn, Nico Brini, the batter now from UConn as well. Here's the pitch outside, 1-0. Yeah, it, it is interesting facing like your, like your own teammate from college, from university, now playing here in summer ball, complete opposite team. That, that must be like funny. Yeah, it's got to be funny when they go back to stores or even just right after the game. Talk about bragging rights. Lots on the line between these two guys. Yeah, and they get to chop it up usually before and after the game. There's a lot of downtime in between the batting practices and IOs that both teams take. That's what makes summer ball so great for these players. Breaking ball chop foul behind home plate. That'll head towards the Newport goal dugout, and it's one and two. Goals with one run home here in the second. They have a one nothing lead. RBI single with two outs by Tyler Hare. Giving him seven RBIs on the season. Scored Slade Alford from second. That balk came back to bite Braden Quinn. One, two, fastball outside. And it's two and two. And the goals are threatening now and looking for more. Brainy, the sixth batter of the inning. The lights have come on here at Cardines. Still plenty of sunlight. It'll be a 2-2. Fastball that is blooped into shallow left. Here comes Davis. It's going to fall for a base hit. Rounding third, heading for home is Hare. The throw is late as Hare dives in safely. And on at first with an RBI single is Nico Brini. And it's 2-0 goals here in the second. Yeah, like I said, the goals looking to attack some more runs, and they just put another one, another run in the board, and now they lead it to nothing. And now the top of the lineup now for the goals with Anthony, De with Anthony Donofrio now batting. Goals have three straight two outs, two out hits as that one is high one and zero. D'Onofrio flew out to the left fielder Zamarzalak in his first half bat. A couple days ago, committed to the University of North Carolina to play his grad year there. Pitches on the inside corner for a strike, one and one. He's a grad student there, and MLB draft coming up in a couple weeks. He'll certainly be on the watch list. As he has been terrific at over 30 steals this past year, 16 home runs for Quinnipiac, and he's been on fire, batting 389 here in the NECBL to start. And a great talented hitter as well. Lefty lefty matchup. As Quinn had two outs with a runner at second, had a chance to get out of it, but. Three straight hits to Hare, Proto, and Brini. Have plated two runs, and the goal is still threatening for more. 
Still threatening for more, and can't possibly have a better guy to play than D'Onofrio. He's five for his last 11 in his last five games on nearly 500 hitting streak. Also batting 450 here at home. Nine for 20. The goals want to return the favor. What happened in Connecticut, the loss in, Co in Connecticut, and now goals here in, in Rhode Island playing against our home fans. Reach Thank four, you. hit up the middle, and Hernandez gets to it, spins, throws, not nearly in time as D'Onofrio has too much speed. That is now four straight hits for the goals with two away. And now the bases are loaded for Colby Branch. Big spot for Kobe Branch. Remember the last time the, the goals had the bases loaded here at Cardin's Field was a, a, a grand slam by Samuel Kulinsigam on, on Friday night. Yeah, Branch already with 10 RBIs on the season and that one is hit down the left field line. It's gonna get down for a base hit. Proto scores, heading for home is Brini. He'll score. And on at second with a two-run double is Colby Branch, RBI's number 11 and 12. And the Gulls have a four-run second inning for a four-run lead over the Westerners. The Gulls want to break this game open early on in the game. As I don't know if that's the pitching coach or the manager trying to settle the pitcher down. It's. It's the hitting coach out there, Bobby Rodriguez, Connor Farrell, the manager. He is the pitching coach, though. You know, if he gets out there, that most likely signifies a pitching change. So Rodriguez has handled most of those exchanges when a pitching coach would be in play. But again, talk about the goals offense. Five straight hits. And a lot of it, it's, it's not necessarily the hardest contact in the books. But it's a lot of loop shots, a lot of, again, shallow outfield hits inside keeping it in the infield, but waiting and running it out with the alignment for the Westerners, and it's stringing all of that together. And all of this happening with two outs. Quinn was so close to getting out of the, getting out of the gym, and this was the inning as well that Quinn had the balk. Yeah. Looked like he was gonna get out of it too, and then five straight hits for the goals. Here's Sam Kulisigam, and he takes a ball outside, one and one. Kulisigam. A one big swing of the way, one big swing away from breaking this one open for Newport. Quinn will be working out of the windup. The one one is low. Two and one to Kulisigam. He struck out swinging to end the first. D'Onofrio at third, Branch at second, breaking ball hit up the middle, and that's going to get into center field for a base hit. D'Onofrio scores, and Branch will score as well as he slides in. The ball goes all the way to the backstop. That'll allow Kalisigam to get to second. Another hit for the goals that they have hit around here in the second, and it's 6 nothing goals. Six run inning here for the goals here in, in the second inning. This is going to be the ninth batter coming up to the plate. The tenth batter, excuse me, the tenth batter coming up to the plate. Yeah, tenth batter and Brian Brecker. The error will go on Jacoby Davis to allow Sam Kulisigam to get to second. As that throw went all the way to the backstop. Brecker swings to the first pitch, grounds one to oh. third, and it goes under his glove. Kaliskum will head for third. Hernandez's throw is not in time as Kaliskum dives in under the tag. So that'll probably be an error on the third baseman, Will Cook, and the inning continues as Slade Offord will come to the plate. A routine play in third base and just under his glove. And the, the goals are still alive here in the second inning, trying to put some more runs in the board as they have runners in the corners here with two outs. Catcher Dan Labrador will give out the signals for a first and third play if there is one in the event that Brian Brecker will take off for second. Slade Alford, the batter, and he swings and 
It's a one hopper, two hopper actually, to Joey Rubin who grabs it and throws on the first. That'll finally retire the inning here, but not before. The goals have seven hits and six runs across the plate. They also strand two. We'll head to the top of the third inning here at Cardine, six nothing. Goals lead, you're watching the NECBL Broadcast Network. Did you know that the NECBL plays over 40 games in under two months? That's a lot of baseball to stay on top of. If you want to make sure you don't miss a thing, sign up for the official NECBL newsletter, providing updates emailed directly to you, highlighting the best of the week that was. Don't miss out. Sign up at NECBL.com today. Over 225 NECBL alumni have gone on to play Major League Baseball, including World Series MVPs Jeremy Pena and Steven Strasburg. With 13 teams in six scenic New England communities, the NECBL offers the most entertaining and competitive amateur wooden bat summer baseball in the country. Now celebrating over a quarter of a century of excellence, the New England League showcases baseball's brightest stars as they keep their eyes on their dream. For current team information, rosters, and schedules, visit NECBL.com. What an inning for the Newport goals. In the bottom of the second, 11 batters came to the plate. Six runs scored. There is some action in the bullpen for the Westerners. Some light tossing. Doesn't seem actually too serious, so might even see Braden Quinn go out there for his third inning of work. But going, to the, going back to the mound for his actual third inning of work here is Adam Marr, and he deals the first pitch fastball low to the left-handed hitter, Jacoby Davis, 1-0. Those throwers in the bullpen, at least for the pitchers, for Dan Braver, George B. Brock the third, and Curtis Clark. Clark had his glove on, B. Brock did not. Got to imagine after that long second inning, the leash for Quinn has got to be pretty short. Marr down in the count, 2-0 to Davis as he rips at a fastball, fouls it back, 2-1. Last thing you want to do if you're Marr after giving a seven or six run lead is walk anybody. Yeah, with Marr, with, with that six run lead, he got to be calm and collective, knowing that he, he has a good cushion. He just got to there throw strikes, and the, the defense will do the rest. As Branch is doing his part, throwing out Davis one away. So he relied on the defense there. And through the first nine batters that Marr has faced, he has given up only one hit. And that one hit was a bunt. It was a bunt single that Hernandez beat out. And yeah, both Feinberg and Cook did get fly balls out of the infield. But besides then, it's been quiet for the Westerners. Yeah, it's been a lot of soft contact induced by Marr, making his third appearance of the year, second start. As that one is hit high in the air to left field, oh. Brini trips and he gets back up and makes the catch. Lost his footing for a second, but he's able to make the grab two away. And this is more first home game of the season starting. The, pa the previous two games, that it was on the road that he pitched. That will be Joey Rubin struck out looking in his first at bat. Mar has now retired six hitters in a row. Long pause. Here's the pitch. Foul the way. Off-speed pitch from Marr, and the count is 0-1. Marr, 5'10", 190 from Plymouth, Massachusetts. Rising sophomore. Past year as a freshman was one of UMass Dartmouth's best pitchers. And he's been one of the Newport Gulls' best pitchers, too. Two ERA coming into this game in nine innings, but still. One very good start against Vermont. They won that game eight to two, gave up only one run in seven innings. That pitch is fouled away. Still 0-2. As I said earlier, Vermont, the best hitting team in the NECBL, and he shut them down. 
Last came into an appearance before this one 10 days ago against the North Shore Navigators. That was a two inning stint. Proto stops that one, one and two. Got a little roughed up against the Navigators. Gave up five hits in those two innings, but still only one run. That was the game that the, 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 the goals came late to tie the game, but, but fall in extra innings. Yeah, that was one of their three losses as that one is swung on and missed strike three. And Adam Moore with three strikeouts to the first three innings of play and three scoreless innings for the left-hander. We'll head to the bottom of the third here at Cardines. And the score, Newport goal six. And the Danbury Westerners nothing. You're watching the NACBL Broadcast Network. Did you know that the NECBL plays over 40 games in under two months? That's a lot of baseball to stay on top of. If you want to make sure you don't miss a thing, sign up for the official NECBL newsletter, providing updates emailed directly to you, highlighting the best of the week that was. Don't miss out. Sign up at NECBL.com today. Over 225 NECBL alumni have gone on to play Major League Baseball, including World Series MVPs Jeremy Pena and Steven Strasburg. With 13 teams in six scenic New England communities, the NECBL offers the most entertaining and competitive amateur wooden bat summer baseball in the country. Now celebrating over a quarter of a century of excellence, the New England League showcases baseball's brightest stars as they keep their eyes on their dream. For current team information, rosters, and schedules, visit NECBL.com. Back at Cardine's Field as we head to the bottom of the third, Quentin Palzell, Jose Rodriguez, and Kyle DeSantis with you. Back to the mound for his third inning of work is Braden Quinn as he looks to rebound from a very tumultuous second inning in which he gave up six runs and seven hits. All six of those runs coming with two away. And the first batter he'll face is Luke Beckstein. And he takes a ball inside 1-0. And Beckstein laces one into the gap in left center field. That'll split the outfielders and go all the way to the wall. Beckstein rounds first and heads for second. Pulls in there with a leadoff double, and the goal's back in business here against Quinn in the third. The goals, after scoring six runs in the second inning, they're looking to put some more runs in the board, board here in the bottom of the third. That leadoff double by Beckstein to get things moving. Let's see if if Tyler Hare could bring him home. Second double of the season for Beckstein. As he goes to retrieve his sliding glove. Used in the event that base runner wants to dive into a base just so their fingers don't get jammed as that one is fouled into and out of the catcher's glove of Dan Labrador. Strike one. Tyler Hare at the time when he hit it, it seemed like a pretty important hit. Scored the first run of the game for the goals with two away. Little did we know that five more batters after Tyler Hare were to also get a base hit. That one is up high, one and one. Hare from Georgia Tech, batting 250 on the season. Two home runs, seven runs batted in. Beckstein with some speed at second. Hernandez playing behind him. The pitch is going to be in there for a strike, one and two. Quinn looking in for the sign. Long look in yeah, for Quinn. He's shaking off twice already. You can see he has the ball on his left pant leg. Just kind of rolling it around his fingers. That's so weird. Hair with two strikes, choking up on the bat, and that one on the outside corner, strike three called. Hair talking with the home plate umpire, Brian McGugan. And McGugan telling him that was at the knees. We take a look at the replay. Looks like a pretty good pitch from Quinn, and there's one away. Same, same. 
first strikeout looking for Quinn, fourth overall, and now the batter will be Ryan Proto. Proto, right-handed hitter from UMass Lowell. Swings to the first pitch, bounds it away off to the right side. And the count's 0-1. Proto this year has one hit in 16 at-bats coming into the game, but got a single back in the second. And there goes Beckstein, and he's going to get third easily as he swipes stolen base number one on the season. And Proto have two RBIs so far this season. He could add another one 90 feet away. Those RBIs came on a two-run double against Mystic a couple weeks ago. That one is inside three and one. Ooh. And that one is going to be in there for a strike. Proto didn't think so, but it's two and two. It clipped the inside corner of the plate. Quinn out of the windup, the 2-2, and that swung on, fouled away as Frank Holbrook, the third base coach, fields it with one hand. Looking to give it to a special fan in the crowd. He was getting some cheers. They were getting involved. It was a nice play. Indeed it was. Infield is back, down by six runs, the 2-2. It is chopped, third base side. Here comes Cook for the plate. Beckstein will score, wide throw, but the tag is applied on Proto. RBI number three on the season for Proto, and the goal score another run, and they extend their lead. Now it's 7-0. Now Nicky, now Nick, Nick Brini at the plate, got on, on base with a base hit. Brini takes the ball inside, 1-0. Brini won the first battle between these two Husky players. Had an RBI single back in the second. Swings and misses at that one. It's 1-1. One one. Brini had a little bit of a slow start to the year, but he has really kicked it into gear for these Newport goals. Every time he's in the lineup, he has been productive. Brainy from Plymouth, Massachusetts, is now playing in his 11th game. Um, the Eagles are out. The Eagles, we're, we're an eagle flying here in the stadium. Yeah, we see some type of bird here. Most of the time they're seagulls. Bringing good luck. To the goals, the 3-1 is fouled away, 3-2. Brini actually has hits in two of his last three games. And four of his last six. His average was at 125 at one point. Now it's at 273. And that has only gone up after his first at-bat. Swings yeah. and misses there, strike three. So Quinn wins round number two against Brini, and that'll do it for the goals in the second, but not before they score one run on one hit. And no one left on. Way to the fourth here at Cardine, seven nothing, goals lead. You're watching the NECBL Broadcast Network. Fans, the NECBL's Broadcast Network brings all of the action right to your home every night. Available on your desktop, laptop, mobile device, as well as your Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Android TV device. Enjoy single-day passes for just $8, purchase a weekly subscription for $20, a monthly pass for $40, or an all-season pass for $80. Head to watch.necbl.com for more information and for a full streaming schedule. On Sunday, July 23rd, the NECBL's best will head to historic Fraser Field in Lynn, Massachusetts for the 2023 NECBL All-Star Game presented by Metro Credit Union. Don't miss the marquee event of the summer. Visit 
asg23.necbl.com for more information. Back at Cardines Field as we head to the top of the fourth inning. 7 nothing goals lead. Adam Marr back to the mound for the goals. Quinton Pelzel, Jose Rodriguez, and now for the next three innings, I will toss it over to the play-by-play -play voice of the Danbury Westerners and Kyle DeSantis. Kyle, take it away. Thank you so much, Quinton. Always great to share the mic on an NECBL broadcast with a fellow Ithaca Bomber. For the Westerners, as they trail 7-0 here in the top of the fourth, there will be some Marzalak, Boynton, and Giacomo, 3-4-5 and five here. Second time through the order, Adam Mars still on the mound, lefty first pitch. Called strike at the knees, nothing and one. So far, seven unanswered runs by the goals through three innings of work. Oh, one pitch. Tapped back foul. Count no balls, two strikes. Remember the last time both of this team met, it was a high scoring game. It was 17 runs combined, 11 6. Indeed, it was. Most of those runs for Danbury came via the long ball. No long ball so far tonight. Marr, the 0-2. High in sight. Now a ball and two strikes. And the goals are a very good offense, too. They come into the league or come into this game second in the league in batting average. They scored nine runs last night. No home runs at Alumni Field up in Keene. One-two pitch down in the dirt to even the count at two and two. Which is almost hard to imagine, too, whenever you go to Keene. See a lot of home runs, but not for the Gulls. They, they don't hit many. They just get on base, put the ball in play, and they just score a lot of runs. And sometimes play the small ball. Remember uh, last week, they had six bunt in one game. Fly ball right field, moving back his hair right in front of the fence. He makes the catch for out number one. So the Marzalak falls to 0 for 2 after the F9, and Luke Boynton steps in. Boynton, another righty batter for the Westerners in this righty heavy lineup, righty heavy team all around at the plate. First pitch from the lefty, Marr, fouled back towards us. No balls and one strike. Boynton walked his first time. It was the second of two runners left stranded in the top of the first to open up this ball game here at Cardines Field. Next pitch. Swing and a miss. The righty out in front of the breaking ball. Count no balls and two strikes. Also up in the bullpen for Dan Barry, giving a quick toss as George V. Brock the third alongside the bullpen catcher in Aiden Jolly. 0 oh 2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. That is his fifth strikeout by Mar in this game. So both pitchers combined, 10 strikeout. Quinn with five, and now Marr with five. Both starters matching now with five strikeouts, as mentioned by Jose Rodriguez. Roman DiGiacomo steps in first pitch to him. Called strike at the knees, nothing in one. DiGiacomo last time grounded four to three to end that top of the first. A slow roller over to Luke Beckstein. Oh one. Fly ball left field. Trotting backwards as Breen now comes back in. Makes the catch to retire the side in order. The Westerners go down 1-2-3 for the third consecutive inning. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth on the NECBL Network. Newport 7, Danbury nothing. Broadcast Network brings all of the action right to your home every night. Available on your desktop, laptop, mobile device, as well as your Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV or Android TV device. Enjoy single day passes for just $8, purchase a weekly subscription for $20, a monthly pass for $40, or an all season pass for $80. Head to watch.necbl.com for more information and for a full streaming schedule.
on Sunday, July 23rd, the NECBL's best will head to historic Fraser Field in Lynn, Massachusetts for the 2023 NECBL All-Star Game presented by Metro Credit Union. Don't miss the marquee event of the summer. Visit ASG23.NECBL.com for more information. Welcoming you back here to Cardians Field in Newport, Rhode Island for the bottom of the fourth inning. The Newport Goals still leading the Danbury Westerners by a score of 7-0. Kyle DeSantis alongside Quentin Pelzell and Jose Rodriguez on the call on the NECBL Network. Still on the mound for Danbury, Braden and Quinn is lined so far through three innings. Seven hits, seven runs, only two of them earned with five strikeouts. Back up top, one, two, and three, D'Onofrio, Branch, and Kula Singham for the Newport Goals. First pitch breaking ball just tapped by D'Onofrio. Nothing in one. Seven runs on seven hits for the goals. So one pitch low and inside, bounces around. Near the goals dugout, picked by Ian Anderson. The even the count, a ball and a strike. Something to point out, the first three, three hitters for, for the goals, four RBIs combined, one, two, three in the lineup. Sliced foul out of play. Over to the street here behind the third base side and Again, you look at D'Onofrio, Branch, and Cool Singham again. Those RBIs coming into play. Seven runs brought home so far by this goal's team. Next pitch. Low outside corner called strike three. The sixth punch out for Braden Quinn. Now steps in Colby Branch. Yeah, that was sorry to step over you, Kyle. That was one of the best pitches that we have seen on the night by Quinn, just perfectly placed on the outside corner. Even if D'Onofrio swings at that pitch, there's not much he can do with that. I mean, maybe hit it the other way for a measly base hit, but D'Onofrio was looking for something better. First pitch breaking ball, flying foul over our heads and out of play. First base side, no balls and one strike. And even if it was the contact that wasn't the best, a lot of those Newport hits strung together were into the shallow outfield. They ended up bringing home all of their runs. So far, seven of them tonight as the breaking ball flutters in for a called strike, nothing in two. Kobe Branch, a double back in the second inning. That scored a two on and run. Brought home Proto and Brini. It's a cut and miss. Back to back punch outs for Braden Quinn. He's got seven now, three straight goals down via the strikeout. You can see why he struck out 14 Mainers in his last start. Goals are not an easy team to strike out but already seven through the first three and two thirds. It's pretty impressive. Aside from that second inning, I've been, I've been very, very intrigued by uh, Quinn. First pitch breaking ball called strike to Sam Kula Singham. Kula Singham singled his last time, moved over to second on the error after the throw from Jacoby Davis in center got past the catcher and Daniel Labrador who takes the next pitch for a one ball, one strike count. 1-1, one, one. low and inside corner called strike two. Now ball on two strikes to the righty batter out of Air Force as the sun now starting to peep through the overcast sky. 1-2 pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. The side struck out by Braden Quinn. He's got eight punch outs. The score after four, still seven to nothing in favor of Newport over Danbury and the NECBL Network. Pace is a health plan that lets mom live at home and gives her the care and support she has to have. Pace has been a real lifesaver for her and for me. Contact Pace, the statewide health plan for aging well at home. I'm turning dreams into reality. In the lab with the formula and chemistry. The memories spark and motivate and make the industry shake. We put the bars in the place. I'm talking one. One chance at best, yes. Painting pictures through the culture, keep the pressure fresh. Took the camera, but the drum of passion never rests. Freedom is a teacher under pressure, now we bless. Yeah, it's one on one shot, not a future, but yours. Let's go! First thing, 
Bruce felt was quality, the consistency, knowing that when I take them out, they're going to be the same every time. Uh, and the second was to to be able to to see kids all over the country wearing you know, the gloves that I designed. That's one of the coolest parts of this. Flying by here at Cardines Field and on the NECBL network through four, the goals leading the Danbury Westerners by a score of seven to nothing as Newport showing why they have the best record in the NECBL so far. Kyle DeSantis alongside Quentin Felzel and Jose Rodriguez on the NECBL network. It will be Danbury coming back to the plate for the fifth time after a one, two, three bottom of the fourth where Braden Quinn struck out the side, took down Anthony D'Onofrio, Colby Branch, and Sam Kulasinga. Yeah, it's been a terrific pitcher's duel. Aside from that second inning for Braden Quinn, I mean, I know you can't take out that second inning, but he would certainly like to. He's got, how many strikeouts is that now? It's eight strikeouts for Quinn, and for Moore, not too shabby either. Five strikeouts, but the only difference is He's only given up one hit, no runs now, and he is looking exactly like what he looked like a couple weeks ago in Vermont. The righty in Feinberg out of Northeastern steps in. First pitch from Marr, swing and a miss. From the right fielder to make the count, no balls and one strike. For the Westerners, it will be Feinberg, Cook, and Labrador, six, seven, and eight. The right fielder, the third baseman, and the catcher. Marr looks in, winds and fires. Breaking ball this time, a called strike to Feinberg, immediately down on the count, nothing and two. Feinberg 0 for 1 with a fly out to left his last time to Nico Brini. A little chopper to the short stop in Branch, picks it up, goes across the diamond in time to Sam Kulasingham for out number one. It's now 11 hitters retired by Adam Marr. Has not given up a base runner since that first inning walk to look Luke Boynton. But he really hasn't been striking out too many batters either. It's just soft fly balls, soft ground balls that he's given up, getting ahead in these counts, not walking anybody. And that's really a recipe for success, even, even with a seven-run lead. The recipes for success as Rocktown now 12 straight. Danbury batters, first pitch to Will Cook. Tried to go downstairs with the fastball, misses for ball one. Cook flew out to right field. Pulled it to Tyler Hare, his last time up in the top of the second. Looking to work against the lefty Marr now, 0-1. Low and outside, now two balls, no strikes. Cook out of Louisville. As mentioned was, or as previously mentioned with the Wareham Gateman earlier this month in the Cape Cod Baseball League, 2-0 pitch. Upstairs to the backstop, now three balls, no strikes. Also, as previously mentioned, his, his dad was picked by the Boston Red Sox in the 1993 MLB draft in the 15th round. 3-0, called strike the ankles, three and one. Cook a lefty who is someone that Connor Farrell wants to Almost reignite the stretch of Louisville Cardinals who have worked for Dan Barry in the past few seasons. Chopper over to the first baseman, Cool Singham, underhand toss over to Marr. He steps on the bag in time for out number two. That was a close play at first base, but, but Marr just beat it out to the bag. Yeah, it's called PFPs. They work on that early in fall ball and it, Whenever anybody hits it to the right side, it's just become an instinct for these pitchers to just head over to first base as quickly as possible. And Mar did just that. And it become a foot race. Fly ball into left center field. And you have Brini and D'Onofrio moving over. A sliding Brini in left center makes the catch for out number three. Four straight one, two, three innings. Retiring the Danbury Westerners. The goals are on fire. They lead seven to nothing through four and a half on the NECBL network. Fans, stay connected by following the New England League on all of our social media channels. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash NECBL. 
Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the NECBL and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Did you know that the NECBL plays over 40 games in under two months? That's a lot of baseball to stay on top of. If you want to make sure you don't miss a thing, sign up for the official NECBL newsletter, providing updates emailed directly to you, highlighting the best of the week that was. Don't miss out. Sign up at NECBL.com today. Over 225 NECBL alumni have gone on to play Major League Baseball, including World Series MVPs Jeremy Pena and Steven Strasburg. With 13 teams in six scenic New England communities, the NECBL offers the most entertaining and competitive amateur wooden bat summer baseball in the country. Now celebrating over a quarter of a century of excellence, the New England League showcases baseball's brightest stars as they keep their eyes on their dream. For current team information, rosters, and schedules, visit NECBL.com. Guardians Field, the site for this game here on June 28th. An afternoon contest on a Wednesday night between the Newport Goals and the Danbury Westerners. The Newport Goals leading the Danbury Westerners, the Westerners currently by a 7-0 score. Kyle DeSantis alongside Quinton Pelzell and Jose Rodriguez welcome you back to the NECBL Network. Braden Quinn, the starter for the Westerners, still out there. Does have eight strikeouts through four innings, though. Seven hits and seven runs given up. Only two of them earned. Danbury does have two errors well with one hit, a bunch single to lead off the game by Javon Hernandez and no runs. The Newport goal seven runs on seven hits. No errors so far on the night as they come to the plate for the fifth time tonight. Brian Brecker, Slate Alford, and Luke Beckstein. Four, five, and six, the DH, the third baseman, and the second baseman. Everything considered for Braden Quinn. It's been a relief to see him out there for five innings now, especially after how that second inning went. Gave up Six runs, gave up another run in the next inning, but to be out there right now in the fifth inning really is just show. It just shows you how perseverant he is and how great he has been. Fly ball into right field, diving in quickly. Feinberg there makes the catch. Dropped down to around thigh height before he went with the underhand snag for out number one. That one. Very similar to Pascal's hits where it's a little bloop. It dives down quickly, and Danbury and the hitters haven't been able to really react, but Feinberg right there with the glove at the waist. Yeah, Feinberg made a really nice catch, but there are a lot of pitchers around the NECBL in summer ball here that would give up six runs, and they'd be out in the next inning. We wouldn't, we wouldn't see them out there, and it would just be a short, short stint for them, but Quinn out there, I mean, he is a workhorse. Five innings now. Um, he's, been, he's been great other than that six run second inning. It also showed the resilience that he has, the way how he could bounce back in, in, in an inning. Fly ball left field, and DeMars Lack moving onto the fence makes the catch for out number two, and continuing the talk about resiliency. Braden Quinn now after that line out to the left fielder DeMars Lack through four and two thirds innings again, considering in the second six runs were put on the board and another was put on in the third. He's Really returned to form of, again, he was a pitcher of the week in week three. First pitch to Luke Beckstein, a called strike breaking ball from the lefty Quinn. Nothing and won the count. Luke Beckstein, the last goal to reach base. Skied foul, first base side. Nothing and two. Beckstein was that line double into the gap, left center field, ultimately Stole third, came home to score on a ground out by Ryan Proto, the catcher. Swing and a miss inside from Quinn, and that retires the side. Down in order, go the goals. By a two flyouts and a strikeout through five. Still 7 to nothing in favor of Newport over Danbury on the NECBL network. Fans, the NECBL broadcast network brings all of the action right to your home every night. Available on your desktop, laptop, mobile device, as well as your Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Android TV device. Enjoy single-day passes for just $8, purchase a weekly subscription for $20,
a monthly pass for $40, or an all-season pass for $80. Head to watch.necbl.com for more information and for a full streaming schedule. On Sunday, July 23rd, the NECBL's best will head to historic Fraser Field in Lynn, Massachusetts for the 2023 NECBL All-Star Game presented by Metro Credit Union. Don't miss the marquee event of the summer. Visit asg23.necbl.com for more information. The choice of Major League All-Stars is now the official batting gloves of the New England League, Bruce Bolt. Bruce Bolt batting gloves are handmade by skilled craftsmen using 100% real Cabretta leather. The stitching, materials, and unique design make these the best fitting, most durable batting gloves in baseball. For more information, visit brucebolt.us. That's brucebolt.us. Goals manager Frank Holbrook goes to the bullpen. Here on the NECBL Network, we welcome you back to the top of the sixth inning between Newport and Danbury. The goals leading the Westerners by a score of 7 to nothing. Kyle DeSantis alongside Quentin Pelzell and Jose Rodriguez. The info now on the righty is Ryan Andrade. And Ryan, again, was from URI, one of the local Rhode Island players of the Newport team. At least get a lot of those guys, again, with Newport, Ocean State around here, and he was with the Rams, his second team, all 8-10, and he had 20 appearances leading the team out of the bullpen. Yeah, not only does he go to nearby URI, but he's from Middletown, Rhode Island. Actually grew up on the same high school team as Caleb Lees, who goes to University of Maine. He's also on the Gulls, but he had the first two great starts against Bristol and North Adams. Five innings, did not actually allow a run in those first two starts. But then in his last start here at home against Vineyard last week, he gave up four runs in an inning and two-thirds, so he'll be looking to rebound from that start um, a week ago. Looking to rebound will be Ryan Andrade, and he will be doing it against 9-1-2, and two, Davis, Hernandez, and Ruben, the center fielder, the shortstop, and the second baseman for the Westerners. Final line for Adam Marr. Five innings pitched, one hit, one walk, and five strikeouts against 17 batters faced. First pitch to lefty Davis, high and outside for ball one. I'm looking for a bounce back outing for Andre. Low and inside for ball two. That one, Nick, the home plate umpire, and Brian McGugan, he's going to... Going to shake that one off. He's going to take some time to now talk with his umpiring crew. The crew tonight, as previously mentioned by Quentin Pelzell at the top of the night. Brian McGugan, the home plate umpire, Stephen Kalenda, and the crew chief, Craig Andriazzi. And that was, that was flush. That got Brian McGugan right in the, I think it was the thigh or the leg area. And for whatever reason, maybe there was a cross up between Andrade and Ryan Proto, the catcher. But for whatever reason, that ball just got by Proto and it just got McGugan right in the leg and Proto didn't even touch it. So that's 92, 93 miles an hour coming right for your knee or leg area. That cannot feel good. Brian McGugan will return behind the backstop to where Ryan Proto is stationed. Frank Holbrook will now, rather that's not Frank Holbrook, that's a former manager in Kevin Winterode now on the team as an assistant coach. He's gonna give the umpire a uh, glass, of water. glass of water. Yeah, he's, he's been around, Ted Regan has, and Definitely knows the pain that the umpire has been in, so just giving him a little, little extra time to uh, shake it off. Yeah, Winter Road was the manager of the team a few years ago, back in 2021, to a pitch to Jacoby Davis, misses inside at the waistline. Now three balls, no strikes. Three zero, called strike on the outer black. Now three and one to the batter in Davis, a lefty. 0-1 on the night, grounded out 6-3 to three to open up the top of the third. 3-1, swing and a miss. Full count now. 90 miles per hour was that pitch. Right by, right by rather the 
Big red center fielder. Sorry to cut you off there, Jose. Full count pitch. Fly ball. Towering foul. And out of the stadium. The righty, Ryan Andrade, rocks into the motion and fires. Another foul ball from Davis, this time back to the netting. Picked up by the home plate umpire in McGugan as he pockets it to continue this full count. The eighth pitch of the at-bat on the way from the righty. Swing and a miss, strike three. And Andrade. 3-0 count, bounce back to strike him out. Started 3-0, got a cold strike to Davis. Davis swift, Davis fouled off two pitches, and then the fastball went right by him for out number one here in the top of the sixth. Javon Hernandez steps in one for two on the night. The Lonely hit for the Westerners as his outside ball one from Andre. And that was a bunt single back to front of the catcher's left side and rather moving towards third base as it's now 2 0 to the shortstop. Walks are certainly going to be something to look out for for Andre. 12 walks and 11 and two thirds coming into this appearance. Called strike sinks in there to Hernandez to make the count 2 and 1. Hernandez reaching base on the single, as mentioned, as that one's fouled back towards us. Count now two balls and two strikes. With that game opening bunt single, now a four game hitting streak in on base streak for the shortstop, as that's an outside breaking ball just missed. Now three and two. Just outside. Did not got the benefit of the doubt. Tried to go for that outer corner. Next one coming. Upstairs for ball four. So Hernandez works a walk. A one out walk for the Westerners. He is the first base runner for the team since he reached, or rather, first base runner since Luke Boynton, who also worked a walk. So that's two now for the, the Westerners who have reached via the walk. Yeah, that was 14 straight batters retired by goals pitching. Most of that coming from Adam Marr, and Andre got his first batter out. First pitch upstairs to Joey Rubin. Leans back for ball one. Rubin has struck out twice tonight, looking in the first, swinging in the third. His now third plate appearance, though first against the new pitcher in Ryan Andre with Hernandez at first. 1-0. Little chopper left side to Alfred. Alfred onto second, Beckstein for one. They will keep it with the fielder's choice as Ruben steps on first. No throw from Beckstein over to Sam Kulasingham. Two outs now here in the inning. Sure. Scoring this game at home. Write that down, five to four, the fielder's choice in your scorecard as Bobby Zamarzalai go for two on the night. A strikeout and a flyout steps in for plate. Offering number three as the breaking ball dips down for ball one from the righty Andrade. Zamarzalai tied for the NECBL lead in home runs with four. Runner on first, now Rubin, one up. Called strike, waistline, and the outer black. On deck, if need be, would be Luke Boynton, who was 0 for 1 with a strikeout, though he did walk. Who's the last base runner to reach before Hernandez's walk to put Danbury with the runner on? Swing and a miss there. Breaking ball to Zamarzalak. Count is 1 and 2. I'm expecting Brian Andre to pitch multiple innings. He's a starter. So he could be on for a good two or three innings here for the goals. Trying to keep that lead intact as Samarzalak fouls it back to the screen for one and two. Seven runs for the Newport Gulls on seven hits. No errors. Danbury, no runs. One hit and two errors. 
Ruben on first after the fielder's choice. Two away, a one-two count here in the top of the sixth inning. Righty-righty matchup. Andre comes home, Ruben on the move, outside. Throw to second from the catcher, Proto. Slide from Ruben, though he's tagged out. <laughs> Caught stealing to end the top of the sixth. The right. score is still 7-0. The NECBL Network. Fans, the NECBL's broadcast network brings all of the action right to your home every night. Available on your desktop, laptop, mobile device, as well as your Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Android TV device. Enjoy single-day passes for just $8, purchase a weekly subscription for $20, a monthly pass for $40, or an all-season pass for $80. Head to watch.necbl.com for more information and for a full streaming schedule. On Sunday, July 23rd, the NECBL's best will head to historic Fraser Field in Lynn, Massachusetts for the 2023 NECBL All-Star Game presented by Metro Credit Union. Don't miss the marquee event of the summer. Visit asg23.necbl.com for more information. The choice of Major League All-Stars is now the official batting gloves of the New England League, Bruce Bolt. Bruce Bolt batting gloves are handmade by skilled craftsmen using 100% real Cabretta leather. The stitching... To the last of the sixth inning we go on the NECBL Network here from the historic Cardians field. 7 to nothing the score. Newport leading over Danbury. First pitch from Braden Quinn still on the mound. Fouled back from the lefty batter in Tyler Hare. For nothing in one count on the NECBL Network. Kyle DeSantis alongside Quentin Pelzell and Jose Rodriguez. On one pitch, a fly ball in the right field. It's going to be looked up for Feinberg. And it's gone. A home run by Ty Tyler Hare. That's his second RBI of the game for Hare. And that is his third home run of the season. Hare steps on home plate. He flaps the wings. He's met by his teammates. And it is now 8 to nothing. Newport over Danbury. Now the last three, seven, eight, and nine of the Newport lineup have four BIs combined. Proto swinging, missing for strike one to, or rather from Braden Quinn. Now eight runs on eight hits, no errors for the Newport goals against the visiting Danbury Westerners. Lefty Quinn looks over his glove, down to Labrador. Rocks into the motion and fires. Line shot in the left field, right to Zamarzalak. Goes down to one knee and makes the catch for out number one. At the plate now for the Newport Gulls. Another lefty batter in Nico Brini, the third time that UConn teammates would be facing off again between Brini and Quinn. It's Daniel Labrador, the catcher, comes out to talk things over with his pitcher. Now Connor Farrell will take the trot out. Brini, one, one hits and two at-bats and an RBI. Looking he points here. towards... The bullpen are waiting to see if they do take him out. He did motion on over, and he does take the ball from the Danbury starter in Braden Quinn. We'll have a new pitcher when we come back here on the NECBL Network as George V. Brock III comes in for the Westerners. Fans, stay connected by following the New England League on all of our social media channels. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash NECBL. 
Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the NECBL and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Did you know that the NECBL plays over 40 games in under two months? That's a lot of baseball to stay on top of. If you want to make sure you don't miss a thing, sign up for the official NECBL newsletter, providing updates emailed directly to you, highlighting the best of the week that was. Don't miss out. Sign up at NECBL.com today. Over 225 NECBL alumni have gone on to play Major League Baseball, including World Series MVPs Jeremy Pena and Steven Strasburg. With 13 teams in six scenic New England communities, the NECBL offers the most entertaining and competitive amateur wooden bat summer baseball in the country. Now celebrating over a quarter of a century of excellence, the New England League showcases baseball's brightest stars as they keep their eyes on their dream. For current team information, rosters, and schedules, visit NECBL.com. The Westerners now go to the bullpen here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Newport Gulls leading 8 to nothing over the Danbury Westerners as they have... Two outs to work with in the bottom of the sixth. Kyle DeSantis alongside Quentin Pelzell and Jose Rodriguez. New pitcher, as mentioned for the Danbury Westerners, they're going to keep with the lefties so far and will be George Vibrock the third coming on in relief of Braden Quinn. We can get you his final line right now. Five and a third innings pitched, eight hits, eight runs, three of them earned, nine strikeouts. Yeah, I would say overall for Quinn, it was obviously up and down, but... It ended very well. Aside from that second inning, he gave up, what was it, six or seven straight two-out hits. Other than that, he was fantastic. He finished with nine strikeouts. It's really much of we saw against the Sanford Mainers. I mean, Jose, you talked about it, his resilience, um, his perseverance through uh, the second inning, and he, he just shrugged it off and kept pitching. Didn't walk really anybody, and, but strikeout pitches. But the goal is just just really on top of their game tonight, put the ball in play when they had to, and came up with some much needed timely hits. And Quinn, it's now his last two start, 23 strikeout combined, after a 14 strikeout performance in his last start. First pitch fouled back from Nico Brini. Now nothing in one, I was a little early, I was gonna say we were get, gonna get Quinn v. Brini three, though Connor Farrell said, nope, not right there. Well. Delay it to an, inev an inevitable future, rather. Oh, one. Check swing, did he break the plane? They're going to say he did. Brian McGugan, the home plate umpire, now no balls and two strikes to the lefty. And as for George V. Brock III, kind of struggled his last time out. Threw an inning and a third against the Martha's Vineyard Sharks. Gave up an earned run on three hits, though had three strikeouts. Oh, two. Outside now, a ball and two strikes. Vibrock also the week two pitcher of the week. In the NECBL in two of those three weeks for the pitcher of the week awards belonging to the Danbury Westerners. Next pitch, breaking ball, check swing. This time Brini held back. Now it is even at two and two. From Vibrock you'll see three pitches. The fastball, four seamer, a change up and a slider. Primarily what he works out of Denison, a D3 school in Ohio. Next pitch. Sliced foul over our heads out of play. Really good at bat here for by Brini. He's had a couple really nice at bats tonight against the left handed pitcher. And for Vibrock, he's more kind of sidearm, low three quarters, and it makes it that much more difficult for the left hand hitter like Brini to pick up the ball. 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Brini goes down via the swing. Vibrock trots around, and Ian Anderson comes in as a pinch hitter. Yeah, that is Michael Anderson from the University of Rhode Island. Did not start this game. It's actually been a couple games now since we have seen him play, but he has been a nice addition to this goals lineup. Had a really good year for the University of Rhode Island. Won all A-10 freshman team honors, and he anchored that URI lineup. First pitch from Vibrock to the righty batter called strike at the letters, nothing in one, and it is Michael Anderson at the plate. I said Ian Anderson. I, I should have known it was Michael Anderson. Again, you and I both 
Ithaca guys, both covering the football team. Michael Anderson, one of the wide receivers, though. Right. He's not the same as the batter at the plate, who is now in a 1-1 count. I feel like Michael Anderson is a pretty common name throughout. Re replacing Anthony Denofrio. This night is over. Swing and a miss by Anderson, and that goes one and two. Final line for D'Onofrio, one for three with a run and a strikeout. Get you the new fielding arrangement as well once the goals get back out there. Bebrock sets and fires. Line shot over the glove of Cook in a left field, a base hit. Anderson around to second. He will get the look back. Now the throw to first gets away from Boynton. So Anderson, after the wide turn, will stay put with one bag out of the box. He was smelling double right out of the batter's box, but the left fielders of Marslak did a really nice job to get to it, fire it in, and it was almost too late for Anderson once he realized that the ball was going to beat him by a mile, and Hernandez threw it. I think if that throw was on target and the first baseman Boynton made the, made the catch, I think Anderson probably would have been out, but now we got a pinch hitter, another one. It's time for Colby Branch. It's Tyler Young. Yeah, w with the goals up by eight, expecting um, the goals to, cle to clean the... Um, Bebrock looks to first, comes home. Swing and a miss. Now nothing and one. It is Tyler Young now at the plate, so another change by Newport manager Frank Holbrook with his lineup. Another swing and a miss, Bebrock. Gunning away currently, nothing and two ahead in the count. Yeah, the goals is going to clean the bench. A lot of pinch hitter now with the goals up by eight. Michael Anderson stands on first after the two out single. Bebrock comes home. Upstairs now, one and two. Tyler Young out of Lehigh, the Mountain Hawks in the Patriot League. Hit 308 this past spring. Chopper foul, third base side out of play. Frank Holbrook making some friends, tossing a ball to a fan. Having some fun in the NECBL. One, two. Called strike three. Young backed up, the V-Rock dotted the black. Young did not like the call, arguing with the umpire a little bit. Through six, eight to nothing to score. A run coming in the sixth on a solo home run off the bat of Tyler Hare. Newport leads Danbury eight to nothing. After six again on the NECBL Network. The chase for the Faye Vincent Senior Cup begins on Monday, July 31st, when the 2023 New England League playoffs will get underway. This year's postseason will feature an eight-team bracket with three rounds of best-of-three series to determine the league champion. Whether you're an island resident or planning a summer getaway, the fastest way to get to the Cape and Islands is by taking the New England League's preferred partner, the Steamship Authority Ferry. Visit SteamshipAuthority.com for more information. Fans, the NECBL's broadcast network brings all of the action right to your home every night. Available on your desktop, laptop, mobile device, as well as your Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Android TV device. Enjoy single-day passes for just $8. Purchase a weekly subscription for $20, a monthly pass for $40, or an all-season pass for $80. Head to watch.necbl.com for more information and for a full streaming schedule. After a rather uneventful middle innings, or middle three innings, I should say, of NECBL baseball, the score stands 8 to nothing. The Newport Gulls leading over the Danbury Westerners. And now for the final three, we hand it back to the voice of the Newport Gulls, Quinton Pelzell. Thank you, Kyle. And we thought that it was going to be there's going to be more runs scored through those four, five, and six innings, especially after how the first three innings went. But 
We'll see what the next three innings bring us as Ryan Andrade is back out there for his second inning of work. He came on and struck out one batter, got really nice throw from Ryan Proto to gun down Joey Rubin going to second base with Zamar Zalak at the plate. That is why Zamar Zalak will lead off here in the top of the seventh inning. Promptly swings and misses 0-1. It'll be 3-4-5 due up for Danbury as he swings and goes around. It's now 0-2. We got some defensive replacements. Michael Anderson, who pinch hit in the bottom half of the sixth. He stays in at first base. Colissigum, who was at first, he'll move to left. And that's Luke Beckstein over at second. He stays put there. And then in center field is Nico Brini. That one is on the outside corner. Strike three called. Second strikeout for Andrade. And there's two, and there's one away. Strikeout looking thing at the replay. It was pitch perfect. Yeah, perfect placement on that fastball. So Brini out in center, Kalisigam in left, and then Michael Anderson at first. That rounds out the defensive replacements, at least for now. Actually, no, Tyler Anderson, Tyler Young actually at shortstop as well. So Young comes in for Branch. And that rounds out the defensive replacements for now. The 01 is a little low. One and one. And Jose, as you said, this is the time of the game where Frank Holbrook likes to go to the bench, likes to put some substitutions in, especially with the goals up 8 nothing. That one is fouled away, and the count is 1-2. and two. Yeah, so everyone could play during the game, especially with a the lead they have. It's, why not? Oh, the 1-2 is going to be in there for a call. Strike three, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Andrade, and there's two away. Strikeout number three for Andrade as well. And one two-thirds inning coming off relief. Better now is Roman DiGiacomo. He's 0 for 2. Grounded out and flew out. And that one is outside. The count is 1-0 and 0 to DiGiacomo. DiGiacomo 6 for 15 coming into this game on the road. That one is grounded to Beckstein and he Muffed it, picks it up. There was the first pit down of the dirt by Michael Anderson as he saves an error that would have been made by Beckstein. Stretch time here at Cardine's Field. 8-0. Goals lead over the Westerners. You're watching the NECBL Broadcast Network. Fans, stay connected by following the New England League on all of our social media channels. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash NECBL. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the NECBL. And subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Did you know that the NECBL plays over 40 games in under two months? That's a lot of baseball to stay on top of. If you want to make sure you don't miss a thing, sign up for the official NECBL newsletter, providing updates emailed directly to you, highlighting the best of the week that was. Don't miss out. Sign up at NECBL.com today. Over 225 NECBL alumni have gone on to play Major League Baseball, including World Series MVPs Jeremy Pena and Steven Strasburg. With 13 teams in six scenic New England communities, the NECBL offers the most entertaining and competitive amateur wooden bat summer baseball in the country. Now celebrating over a quarter of a century of excellence, the New England League showcases baseball's brightest stars as they keep their eyes on their dream. For current team information, rosters, and schedules, visit NECBL.com. <laughs> Take me out to the ball game was just played here at Cardine's Field. Seventh inning stretch as the goals are enjoying an eight nothing lead over the Danbury Westerners. Goals will come to break, will come to bat here. Three, four, five, do up. As George V. Brock, the third, is back out there. 
for his second full, or for his first full inning of work, I should say. He'll be working out of the windup. It'll be Kulisigam, Brecker, and Alford do up. At least those are the do up batters, but we'll see what Holbrook wants to do as he dips into the bench. Part of the goals lineup is batting three, four, and five. Kluskum has had a good day at the plate. Grounds one there to Hernandez. He comes up with it and throws on to first. One away. We will have a pinch hitter for Brian Brecker, and it'll be Billy Butler, who was the hero a couple nights ago. Three-run home run against Vermont in the sixth inning. A pinch hit. Go ahead, three-run home run in that 5-2 win against the Mountaineers. So he pinch hits for Brian Brecker, whose night is over. Started at the DH spot. Butler getting a nice ovation. Local kid, also goes to URI. Lefty-righty matchup, the pitch fouled away, 0-1. Did he come out to the Undertaker's theme? Yes, he did. I was not paying attention. Yes, he did. I like this guy. I like this guy. I'm a big pro wrestling fan. Immediately heard that gong. It stood out to me. Well, just wait till you get to meet him if you ever do, if you ever talk with him. He is such a great guy to talk to. A pleasure to do some interviews with him and just always a joyful guy, always in a good mood, joking around. Always smiling. Yeah, does seem like that. Also yeah. has a brother, plays for Ocean State Waves. They had a chance to play against each other over the weekend. Butler started in that game. Billy did, and he had a hit. But Butler has been starting to swing the bat very well. One, two. Swung on. That is laced in the left center field. On the run is Davis. He will not get to it, and it will go all the way to the wall. Butler will pull in at second with a one-out double, a pinch hit double for Billy Butler here in the seventh. Butler, first six inning in the bench, and then with that double. Yeah, it's gotta be hard for someone who's sitting on the bench. It's not really cold out right now, but I mean, it's really all mentally. You're just sitting on the bench watching the game, trying to stay in the game, and then all of a sudden your name is called and you're out there facing 89, 90 mile an hour fastball. That was a breaking ball, I believe, that Butler hit, and he was great. Yeah, that happened as well the other game. Yes. Yeah, he was talked about that in the post game, just trying to stay ready, keep his mind right. That was a breaking ball that Butler hit, that three run home run on Monday. But he says he hits lefties really well. His last two hits have been against lefties. As he takes his lead from second, the batter now is Slade Alford. Takes a ball low, 1-0. and Alford, one for three tonight. Single, then advanced to second on a balk in the second inning, and then eventually came around to score on the RBI single by Tyler Hare. Now Vibrock and Labrador can't come to terms on a pitch. So now they're going to be talking about it. Bottom of the seventh, eight nothing goals lead over the Westerners. The Westerners took game one of this matchup a couple weeks ago. The goal's toughest loss of the season so far. They lost that one 11 to six. Westerners scored a ton of runs via the home run ball, but tonight it's just been polar opposite. Returning the favor. Goals have the best record in the league, the best pitching staff, ERA as well, 2.06 earned run average, more than a half a run better than the second team. It's more of the same tonight for this goals pitching staff as Alford pulls one foul. Speaking of pitching, last night, the first eight inning, the goals pitching staff, no runs allowed. Eight and two thirds actually came down to the final out against the Keen Swamp Bats, and Grant Umberger gave up a home run. But the goals were so close to getting another shutout, would have been their fourth of the season. 
They're looking for a shutout tonight as well. Alfred swings and bloops one into shallow right. Feinberg is there, makes the catch. Butler gets the throw from Feinberg as it's cut off by Hernandez. So now there's two away, and here comes Luke Beckstein. Beckstein, one for three. Doubled, stole a base, and scored in the third. Trying to cash in that run. Make it two consecutive nights that the Gulls have scored nine runs. That pitch is going to be in there for a strike, going one to Beckstein. Beckstein, a returning goal. I imagine what's going on through the hitter's head when there's runners in scoring position, knowing that they're one hit away from from putting extending the lead or scoring a run. Yeah, some hitters they really love the situation coming up with runners on. Some hitters are indifferent. All gotta take pa um, patience and not being anxious. Beckstein drove in seven runs last summer for the Gulls. The 1-1. One, one. Up high. Good take by Beckstein, 2-1. and one. one of the other approaches, or at least that one can take, just take it one pitch at a time. Don't treat it as anything different than treat a base is empty at bat. Treat it the same as a base is loaded at bat. It could be hard to because you could start dreaming, but that could be one way to stay grounded. 2-1 is chopped foul outside of third. Count is 2-2. Two and two. Look around the league. Vermont has a 2-0 lead over the Bristol Blues. That game is in the bottom of the fifth. In the top of the third, it's Ocean State and Keene. That game is scoreless at 0-0. Top of the third in Martha's Vineyard, it is 0-0 between the Sharks and the Steeplecats. Here's the 2-2. Popped up, foul behind home plate. Labrador hoping for a look. It's going to go out of play. Still 2-2. Two and two. two other games got postponed today. Mystic and Sanford. That game was in Maine, and that one postponed to July 24th. The Gulls will actually head up to Maine tomorrow, so hopefully that field dries out quickly. And then the sixth game of the night, the Navigators and the Nighthawks, that one postponed. It was originally delayed due to rain, and then they just called it all together. Up in southern Vermont, that one comes in, hits Beckstein. He'll head down to first base as the bottom of the sixth continues here at Cardine's Field, and it'll be Tyler Hare coming off of his third home run of the year in his last at-bat. Butler still at second. Hare two for three. Two RBIs tonight. Has scored two runs. Rest the bat on his shoulders. Another lefty-lefty matchup. Here's the pitch. Check swing. Doesn't matter. It's a strike anyway. 0-1. Single and a home run for Hare tonight. Let's see if he can keep it going here in the seventh inning. Vibrock, the third, comes set. The 0-1 is going to be outside. And the count's one and one. The way Harry's at the plate, he doesn't have pressure at all. He's loose. He, know, he knows his pitch that he wants to, to hit. Here's the pitch, and that one is outside. Count now two and one to Hare. Hare from Georgia Tech. Outfielder for the Gulls. Big, tall, left-handed hitter, has a ton of power. Now one home run away from tying the NECBL lead in home runs at four, as that one is on the outside corner for a strike two and two. 
These last few pitches, it's been Bebrock trying to work that outer corner. The home plate umpire, Brian McGugan, hasn't been giving him the call. It's been just a bit out there, but that one finally able to clip the black. So Bebrock trying to get out of trouble here in the bottom of the seventh to give the Westerners at least a little bit of a chance in the eighth. Good take by Hare. Nice block by Labrador, three and two, two outs. Now with three and two, two outs, the runner's gonna be on motion. So Butler will get a head start from second and Beckstein from first. Gotta think anything in the gap would probably mean two runs for the Gulls. Outfield straight away, the infield is back. The first baseman Boynton not holding on Beckstein and that one is fouled back. We'll do it again, three and two. Goals will be in Sanford tomorrow, hoping that the rain stays away. I think it, it is supposed to rain in the morning, but it should clear out in the afternoon. That field up there is beautiful to go to. About a two and a half, three hour drive from Newport. Maybe, maybe a little bit more than that. One of their longest road trips of the year. And that 3-2 is on the outside corner, perfectly placed by Vibrock the third. And that'll do it for the goals here in the seventh inning as we will head to the eighth. Eight nothing goals lead over the Westerners. You're listening to the NECBL Broadcast Network. Pace is a health plan that lets mom live at home and gives her the care and support she has to have. Pace has been a real lifesaver for her and for me. Contact Pace, the statewide health plan for aging well at home. Turning dreams into reality In the lab with the formula and chemistry The memories spark and motivate And make the industry shake We put the balls in the place I'm talking one One chance at best, yes Painting pictures for the culture Keep the pressure fresh Take the camera, work the drum of passion Never rest Freedom is our teacher Under pressure, now we bless Yeah It's one on one shot Now the future is yours Let's go First thing Bruce felt was quality, the consistency, knowing that when I take them out, they're going to be the same every time. Uh, and the second was to to be able to to see kids all over the country wearing you know, the gloves that I designed. That's one of the coolest parts of this. Back here at Cardine's Field as we head to the top of the eighth. See some fans taking in the action at Cardine's on this Wednesday evening. Enjoying what could, what could potentially be a goals win. They're up eight nothing, but crazier things have happened. Ryan Andrade back to the mound for his third inning of work. It'll be Feinberg, Cook, and Labrador up against Andrade, who has been very good in his first two innings of work. Good rebound appearance for Andrade after his last start did not end how he would have liked it. First pitch is a strike 0-1. And, and most importantly for Andrade, too, he has limited the walks. Only one walk here through the first two innings, and he is pouring in strikes. That one is lifted high in the air to left center field. On the run is Brini, and he will leap, and he'll make the grab at the fence. What a catch by Nico Brini. The second spectacular play of the night for the UConn product, and there's one away. Robbing an extra base hit, just jumping and extending his arm to catch the ball. Wow. Just a spectacular catch by Brini, who seems like every game he's in the outfield, he's making some sort of diving or sliding or running catch. And it seems like the catch probability on it is less than 10%. I mean, Brini has been spectacular in the outfield. He's starting to come around offensively. Rising sophomore 
that the coaching staff at UConn very, very high on. As Cook swings and misses. Count is now one and one as Andrade keeps chugging along as we're in the top of the eighth. Eight nothing goals. The one one swung not and missed and the count one and two now to Cook. Big tall left-handed hitter is Cook. That one is going to be at the knee. Strike three called. Fourth, excuse me, yes, fourth strikeout for Andrade, and there is two away. Well executed. Batter now is Labrador. Labrador 0 for 2. Getting his first look at Ryan Andrade. Two outs, nobody on. The pitch is in there for a strike, 0 and 1. Fastball at 91 miles an hour, and it looks like Andrade has settled in. He's retired five hitters in a row now. Pitch is going to be outside, and the count's 1 and 1. Very pleasant evening, as that one is a slider that skipped to the plate. Labrador way out in front, one and two. One strike away for one, two, three inning. See if he gets it here, a breaking ball that just sits a little high, two and two. Some of the goals faithful thought that that did catch the plate, though. The other umpires in the stands that wanted that call for the hometown kid, didn't get it. 2-2, two -two. fastball fouled back. Right in on the hands. That was a good pitch as well, it was well executed. It was a borderline pitch. One of those curve balls, breaking ball, it looked more curved with the drop that it was trying to drop in. Trying to go with that slider off the plate. Nice take by Labrador. Three and two, two outs with Jacoby Davis on deck. Andrade looking in for the sign. He's got it. Three, two. Pitch is going to be outside ball four. So with an eight run lead, Andrade opting to go with the breaking ball in a three, two pitch. He'll walk Labrador. And that'll set up the number nine hitter, Jacoby Davis. Davis so far tonight 0 for 2. Grounded out and struck out. First pitch rides a little high, 1 and 0 to Davis. Davis went to school at Cornell. Rising sophomore from Ithaca, New York. From where we went to school, Kyle. Certainly no Ithaca through and through. Talking with him about Cornell hockey and the oh, programs yeah. they have. He hasn't gone to a game yet. Really? I find that very hard to believe. That's that's their best sport there. I know. I I, I was shocked, but he, he did say that he hasn't gone to Cornell. I'm hoping he does get a few this next year. What else is he doing in the dead of winter? Like a December night in the middle of the week in Ithaca. 2 1 is in the dirt. And it's 3 and 1 now to Davis. I mean, I went to Ithaca College for four years, and I've been to a handful of Cornell hockey games. I've gone to a few as well. It is a great atmosphere. The fans always get into it. The student section is one of the best in the country. And, I mean, the hockey is very, very high quality, too. 3-1 is high ball four, so Andrade has, locked, has lost the strike zone over the last two batters he's faced. And we're back to the top of the order in Javon Hernandez. Maybe... On those Friday nights, he's traversing the commons in some sort? I mean, if it's 10 degrees outside like it normally is in Ithaca he, if you, if in you the If you bundle dead of winter, up, I mean, it, c it could possibly work. Yeah, uh, I guess. Upstate New York, it's really cold. Yes. Especially yeah. it snows a lot during the winter time. It snows like every day. You don't see the sun until seems like May. Yeah. I mean, there's like a six-month stretch where if you see the sun, you're lucky. <laughs> Pitch is high and outside, 1-0. and So Davis at first, 
And Labrador at second as the Westerners trying to break up the shutout. Javon Hernandez, certainly the man to do it, leading the league in batting average. The pitch is high and inside, 2-0. and oh. Did have a bunt single in the first to extend his hitting streak. Now one for three. Even though he is one for three tonight, his average does go down ever so slightly. Came into this game and with a 349 batting average. And we should mention, point out, that that's the only hit for... That one is in the right field, and Hare had trouble finding it. That's going to drop for a hit. Rounding third and heading for home and scoring is Labrador. In at third is Davis. That's going to be marked down as an RBI single as Tyler Hare could not find it. I was about to say that, and we should have mentioned that was the only hit for Danbury, but now probably going to get two, two hits now after that one. That one, a gift single there. As that ball playing tricks on Hare. So now runners at the corners. And Ruben swings to the first pitch, fouls it back, 0-1. So a little bit of life for the Westerners as they break up the shutout in the latter innings, just like the Keen Swamp Bats did last night against the Gulls. Top of the eighth inning continues. Ruben takes a ball low, breaking ball, 1-1. Ruben 0 for 3, struck out twice, reached on a fielder's choice, and then was gunned down trying to steal second to end the sixth inning. Good speed on the base paths for the Westerners. Davis at third, Hernandez at first. Here's the pitch. Low and outside, 2 and 1. So the wind starts to pick up here in Newport. We're supposed to get a little bit of rain later on tonight. But this game so far has been flying along just past 8.30. The two hour mark and we're in the top of the eighth with two outs. Good hitters count, 2-1 on Ruben. Foul back, right on that fastball at 90 miles an hour, two and two. Ruben from Rollins College, stands at five foot 10, 175. Rising senior. And a very good season at Rollins this past year. Well over 300. One struck away from getting out of the inning, the top of the inning. Long pause, the 2-2, two -two rides up and in, 3-2. And, and Andre just cannot get this final out here in the eighth. Granted, it may not be all his fault as Tyler Hare just lost the ball in the outfield in the night sky. Two walks in this inning. 3-2, two, two outs. Hernandez off from first, and he blows it right by Ruben. Strike three. So Andrade gets into and out of trouble, but not before the Westerners pick up one run on one hit. Two runners left on base. Way to the bottom of the eighth. Eight to one now is the score. The Gulls still with the lead. You're watching the NECBL Broadcast Network. Fans, the NECBL's Broadcast Network brings all of the action right to your home every night. Available on your desktop, laptop, mobile device, as well as your Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Android TV device. Enjoy single-day passes for just $8, purchase a weekly subscription for $20, a monthly pass for $40, or an all-season pass for $80. Head to watch.necbl.com for more information and for a full streaming schedule. On Sunday, July 23rd, the NECBL's best will head to historic Fraser Field in Lynn, Massachusetts for the 2023 NECBL All-Star Game presented by Metro Credit Union. Don't miss the marquee event of the summer. Visit asg23.necbl.com for more information. Back at Cardine's Field, the lights are on. Still see a little bit of the clouds as there is a full overcast here in Newport. And it's been like that for the majority of the day, but luckily no cloud for, or no rain or any fog, at least to this point. 
as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning. The Westerners finally got a run in the top of the eighth. It was on an RBI single by Javon Hernandez, a ball that Tyler Hare could not locate off the bat. And I think the night sky right now is in a little bit of an in-between where it blends in with the ball. But either way, it's 8-1 to one now, and the Westerners have a new pitcher on the mound. It will be John Link. Yeah, John Link looking at him, the third lefty that the Westerners have used. This is the lefty day on a Wednesday night in Newport. His third appearance of the summer, a three-pitch mix, four-seam fastball changeup, and a slider. Last time out, it's been 10 days since he pitched. It was two-thirds of an inning on June 18th at Valley through 21 pitches and an eventual loss. First time that he'll face the Gulls. His first appearance came against Vermont. He gave up one run in that stint and two walks. Still looking for his first strikeout of the season. So he'll come in and try to get Proto, Brini, and Anderson out as Proto swings to the first pitch and fouls it back 0-1. Proto tonight is 0 for 3. There's a swing and a miss. And the count is 0 and 2. Take a look around the league again. Bottom of the eighth now in Bristol. It is Vermont 2 and the Blues 1. As Link comes set, the pitch is going to be in there, strike three called. So Link gets his first strike out of the season as he punches out Proto, and there's one away. Kind of mentioned this with Vibrock as well, the prior pitcher for Danbury. More of a sidearm kind of release. Second straight pitcher that has been put on the mound by Connor Farrell that has that kind of throwing motion. One lefty do up here in this inning will certainly play a factor. It's Nico Brini now at the plate, he's one for three. Started his evening with an RBI single, scored a run, and since then he has struck out twice. And that one is hit in the air to right field. Coming in on it quickly is Feinberg, and he makes the catch, chest high, and there's two away. So back to the top of the lineup, it'll be Michael Anderson getting his second at bat of the game. Came in late in the game to pinch hit for Anthony D'Onofrio, who started. Anderson. Top of the sixth in Keene, it is Ocean State five, and the Swamp Bats nothing. Gulls gave the Swamp Bats a loss yesterday. Dropped to five and 10 with that loss. And then in the top of the fifth, it is the North Adams Steeplecats five and the Sharks four. That one is inside 2-0. Oh, that game obviously means a lot for the goals, trying to want to make sure that the Sharks lose as the Sharks are in their division. And 2-0 oh is fouled back, 2-1. and one. The goals right now with a four-game lead over the Mystic Schooners, who did not play tonight. They were scheduled to play, but rain in the area of Sanford postponed that one to a later date, July 24th. And then another game, North Shore Navigators and Upper Valley Nighthawks, that one postponed as well. It'll be three and one now to Michael Anderson, who singled in his first at bat. In the top of the ninth, it'll be three, four, five due up for the Westerners. 3-1, outside ball four, and Anderson is on for the second time tonight. Tyler Young now the batter. And Young swings at the first pitch, grounds one to the third baseman, Cook, fills it and throws on the first to retire Young. That'll do it for the goals here in the eighth. 
No hits, no runs, and one man left on. We'll head to the ninth, last at bats for the Westerners as they need seven to tie and eight to go ahead. You're watching the NECBL Broadcast Network. Fans, the NECBL's Broadcast Network brings all of the action right to your home every night. Available on your desktop, laptop, mobile device, as well as your Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Android TV device. Enjoy single-day passes for just $8, purchase a weekly subscription for $20, a monthly pass for $40, or an all-season pass for $80. Head to watch.necbl.com for more information and for a full streaming schedule. On Sunday, July 23rd, the NECBL's best will head to historic Fraser Field in Lynn, Massachusetts for the 2023 NECBL All-Star Game presented by Metro Credit Union. Don't miss the marquee event of the summer. Visit asg23.necbl.com for more information. The choice of Major League All-Stars is now the official batting gloves of the New England League, Bruce Bolt. Bruce Bolt batting gloves are handmade by skilled craftsmen using 100% real Cabretta leather. The stitching, materials, and unique design make these the best fitting, most durable batting gloves in baseball. For more information, visit brucebolt.us. That's brucebolt.us. Fans, stay connected by following the New England League on all of our social media channels. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash NECBL. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the NECBL and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Back to Cardines Field as we head to the top of the ninth inning. Quinton Pelzel, Jose Rodriguez, and Kyle DeSantis with you in the Newport goals will go to the bullpen. Third pitcher used will be... Will Gibbs from Mississippi State. He will get the ninth inning non-save situation for Gibbs from Flowood, Mississippi. Stands at six foot 180. Rising sophomore has gone into four games before this appearance. Nine strikeouts in five innings. Last appearance came six days ago. Fastball rides high to the number three hitter, Bobby Zamarzalak. And there's... It's a bunny. Bunny. There's a, there's a bunny. I'm sorry to cut you off, but right third base side foul ground. It was a bunny. He's just almost camouflaging there right now. Pitch is a little low, 3-0. Taking in the action right on the field. He's got the best seats in the house. So Will Gibbs has walked five in five innings. And Zamarzlak taking all the way. Takes a strike 0-1. And, that one inside ball four. So Gibbs on five pitches walks Bobby Zamarzlak. And that will bring to the play Luke Boynton. Trying to keep things going for the Westerners. With that last walk, Zamarzalak has now reached base in all nine games he's played in with the Westerners this season. Yeah, he has been spectacular. I remember when the goals were playing him a week and a half, two weeks ago, and came in, hit a home run, and the bunny now crosses foul territory into fair territory. Sorry. <laughs> the bunny. <laughs> Went from third base side to first base side. Where's security? <laughs> now we're back. Bunny is back in foul territory, so we're ready for baseball. The pitch is going to be inside. Now in, in my defense, I'm not trying to be the bad guy here, but I thought you're supposed to run from first to third. Not third to first, as the bunny just did. Still <laughs> now going down further the baseline almost near the dugouts now. I think the bunny will make his own rules. Fair enough. The bunny is now going to the outfield. 
getting yeah. further away from action, so it shouldn't really be a problem the rest of the way. Meanwhile, Gibbs down 2-0 to Luke Boynton. 0 for 2 tonight. Swings at the pitch. Lines went down the right field line towards the bunny's direction, and that is foul. It's 2-1. and one. It Might have been as well a broken bat. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. And that'll be firewood for this evening's bonfire. Yeah, trying to get a new bat there. Danbury will be back at home tomorrow. Going to make the trip back tonight, probably get in Say around, what would you say, Kyle, 1.30, 2 o'clock? Yeah, I would say around that. Normally it can get to 3, so yeah. this is actually a pretty quick game here. So far, so good as Gibbs now down to the count, 2-1. and one. The pitch is going to be inside, 3-1. and one. On deck is Roman DiGiacomo. At Danbury home tomorrow. They'll play the Valley Blue Sox. Pretty important game for both Valley right now leading the West. As that one is low ball four, so Gibbs has come on and he's walked the first two batters that he has faced. And for the first time tonight, we will see the pitching coach of the Newport goals, Kevin Winterode. He'll head out and try to smooth things out with Will Gibbs. The, goal, the goals are looking to win their sixth straight game. As well. Yeah, it'd be six wins. It'd be win number 15. Any CBL leading 15 and three for the goals. Westerners not going away Quiet. quietly. The Giacomo so far tonight 0 for 3. There's some action going on in the goals bullpen. It is white. Yeah, Wyatt Danilovich from the University of Louisville. He is getting warm and getting warm rather quickly. Just in case if he gets further trouble. And that first pitch rides high and tight, 1-0 to DiGiacomo. Grounded out, flew out and grounded out in his first three plate appearances. Samarzalak at second, Boynton at first. The pitch is going to be low and outside as Proto tried to backhand it, but he couldn't. Went all the way to the backstop. Moving into third is Samarzalak, and Boynton in at second now. That get the double play out of order. With both runners moving up on that pitch. And with those runners up 90 feet, the infield does stay back. They will gladly trade an out for a run at this point. 2-0, swung on and missed, strike one. And Gibbs, after walking the first two batters and going down in the count, 2-0 to the right-handed hitter, DiGiacomo. He was swinging 2-0. Hitter's count. Another hitter's count should get a pretty good pitch here. 2-1 is grounded hard to the shortstop. That's Tyler Young. The run will score. Going over to first base is Young. That'll complete the out. Scoring on the play is Zamarzalak, and it's now 8-2. to two. So just what Gibbs needed. Maybe that will settle him down as he gets one out here in the ninth. That'll be Harrison Feinberg, who's 0 for 3. Gibbs has the sign. And the first pitch. Foul back to the screen, 0-1 to Feinberg. Westerners with a loss tonight will drop to 6-11 and 11 on the season. Third place in the West behind the Blues and the Blue Sox. The 0-1, high and outside, 1-1. One and, one. and they will also face the Blue Sox in that game tomorrow. Then they have the final month, or the final day, I should say, the month of June off in the 30th before a doubleheader on the 1st against North Adams. Yeah, how about that? Already game number 17 and 18 have already been played. This is actually 18 and 19 for both of these teams as swinging and missing is Feinberg, 1 and 2. Already almost halfway through the NECBL season as we're starting to get to the point now where you can scoreboard watch. Still, rel still relatively early. 
as that one is outside two and two. Still just got to try to pile up as many wins as possible. And then maybe in a week or so, that's when you can start really looking at the scoreboard every night, seeing which team wins, seeing which team losses, crunching the numbers, seeing how many games out you are. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on, foul tipped, and that was off of the home plate umpire. And I'll tell you what, Brian McGugan has had a very tough game behind the plate. Physically, he has been hit flush by a 90, 91 mile an hour fastball from Ryan Andrade, and this one foul tipped right off. Looked like maybe his midsection, somewhere on his body, and he's certainly feeling it. Yeah. McGugan certainly earning his paycheck tonight. Nice Bunny makes another appearance. Uh Maybe coming to the aid of McGugan. The bunny is, uh, is on. Uh, the bunny is actually on fair territory right now. Uh, yeah, the the home plate umpire. It's that that's probably the toughest job of any umpires. It's the home plate umpire because a lot of foul balls they could hit you. And you know, m most umpires they don't continue after they get hit. On, on a foul ball. So, it's really difficult. Yeah, we've certainly seen that tonight. But Mogukin looks like he'll tough it out it's for the next two outs. Gets a nice hand by the Newport faithful. Strong man. And here is Ted Regan back out there again for the second time, giving him a nice glass of water. Give him a couple extra seconds to uh, shake it off. Ted Regan, the assistant coach slash hitting coach for the Newport goals. So back to the mound goes Gibbs. Runner leads from second, that's Luke Boynton. It'll be a 2-2 pitch. And it's a little low. Three and two to Feinberg. On deck is Will Cook. The crowd with a let's go golf chant here in Cardines. And that three two is fouled away. Still three and two to Feinberg as the Westerners continue to try to mount a rally. Goals will be heading up to Maine tomorrow before returning home on Friday in the second game of the Pell Bridge Showdown between the Gulls and the Waves. That one is in there, strike three, call the breaking ball that backed up on Feinberg. And the Westerners are now down to their final out as you see the replay here. Feinberg thought that maybe it was a little high, but not the case, says Brian McGugan. Last chance for the Westerners. Will Cook, the batter. Trying to keep things alive for Danbury. Pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. Cook has had a 0 for 3 night. 8-2, goals lead. As Gibbs comes set, the 0-1, swung on and missed, strike two. And now the Westerners down to their final strike. The crowd wants a strikeout. They're clapping right now. Trying to get Gibbs across the finish line. The 0-2. Foul back, fastball at 88 miles an hour. Gibbs will also get it up to 90. Trying to put get, trying to put Cook away. Approaching nine o'clock here in Newport. Cook rests the bat on his left shoulder. Pointing the runner at second, the 0-2. Swung on and missed, strike three. Blew a fastball right by Cook. Two strikeouts in the inning for Gibbs, and that will do it for the Westerners.
The Goals win their 15th game of the season. The NECBL leader in wins. They're now 15 and three and on the loss, the Danbury Westerners fall to six and 11. We'll step aside quickly, but stay tuned for the Newport Goals post game show. Stay right here on the NECBL broadcast network. NECBL's broadcast network brings all of the action right to your home every night. Available on your desktop, laptop, mobile device, as well as your Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Android TV device. Enjoy single day passes for just $8, purchase a weekly subscription for $20, a monthly pass for $40, or an all season pass for $80. Head to watch.necbl.com for more information and for a full streaming schedule. On Sunday, July 23rd, the NECBL's best will head to historic Fraser Field in Lynn, Massachusetts for the 2023 NECBL All-Star Game presented by Metro Credit Union. Don't miss the marquee event of the summer. Visit asg23.necbl.com for more information. And we're back here in Cardine's Field as the Newport, the Newport goals an 8-2 victory. The story, six-run second inning. That's all what the goals needed for this win. Yeah, it really was, and it was stringing those hits together. Yes, he did have the home run later on from Tyler Hare, but again, that those six runs put on Braden Quinn. Again, Quinn, the reigning any CBL pitcher of the week was mainly all that the goals needed. Danbury only got two runs on two hits. They only had one hit for most of the game. That was a bunt single by Javon Hernandez just as the game opened up. But really, this was a dominant showcase of Newport, both on the pitching and on the hitting side. It, it all started on, the, on that balk in the second inning. That balk was the game changer for the goals as the goals took advantage of it. Yeah, it was that balk, and that's happened now for Braden Quinn in back-to-back -back appearances. I don't know if it's something from necessarily a mechanics point of view, but it's something he has to find out how to limit. I, it looks more, at least from watching it close up, he moves that back leg just a little bit, and sometimes it's not called a balk, and it's been called a balk twice now. So, again, that, that's just how it's been for both the last two times that Quinn's taken the bump. The goals have won now six in a row, and for you, for you guys, the Danvers, eight, eight of losers, eight of the last 11? I would believe so. I, I think now with the loss, we're either two or, th or, or the Westerners, I should say, either, either two and three or one and four. They have a big game tomorrow. They host the Valley Blue Sox. First time they actually host Valley, and then those are two teams that are atop that Western division. That's very tight, very jumbled up together. But again, for Danbury, this is a loss that they're going to have to bounce back from, and they are going to take the bus ride back. It's going to be a little bit of time. They will get some more sleep than what they originally might have anticipated, but they're going to have to try to right their wrongs tomorrow at the Roadhouse against the Blue Sox. Ryan Andre came in relief for the Newport goals. Three innings, five strikeout, and three walks. So that, that was really impressive. Bounce back outing from his last outing that he did not pitch so good. Yeah, bounce back is the, the great way to put it. Again, you did mention the walks. They were more of a factor earlier on. It, it kind of retreated in the beginning, kind of came back in the end. They were still able to get those five punch outs, though, and continue almost, not necessarily, but it kind of was mowing down the Danbury offense in a sense. Starting pitchers for both teams combined for 14 strikeout in this one. So there was a lot of strikeouts involved. Yeah, it was kind of a mix between the two. Some looking for Quinn, it was more swinging. For Mar, it was more looking. But in the grand scheme of things, again, both of the, those starters are going to get different results again. You're going to have Quinn with the loss. You're going to have Adam Mar with the win. And again, it's just something where the strikeouts were there, but it's in the end all about limiting runners, getting around a score. For Quinn... The, the past two games, 23 strikeout combined, 14 strikeout 
his last start, and now nine strikeout here against um, the goals. I mean, I'm going to sound like Connor Farrell, but, but Quinn is just a grinder, and we're going to talk more about him maybe later on, but we're going to go to Quinton Pelzell now for our post-game interview here on the Newport Goals post-game show. And welcome back to the Newport Goals post-game show. I'm here with player of the game for the Newport Goals, Adam Marr. Five innings, no runs given up. Uh, you look great tonight. What was the key to your success here um, against a very tough team? Uh, Changeup really worked a lot today, so I was setting up my, I was having my changeup set up my fastball for the strikeout pitch and uh, pounding the zone, throwing strikes. That all came into play good. And now you have an ERA under two. You've pitched very well in your three games out there. In your two starts, I mean, that first start against Vermont, you went seven innings, gave up a run. Now you go five innings, don't give up a run here against two very good teams. Uh, the NEC Bill is supposed to be tough, and you're making it look easy. I explained how you're doing that. Uh, just throwing strikes and trusting the defense, letting them make plays. Definitely is helping me out. So it's really all it, just attacking the hitters. Now you guys are 15 and three. NECBL leading 15 wins now. You guys got a really good mojo going, and the main reason why is the pitching staff. You guys have an ERA that is in the low twos, uh, first in first in the league in ERA. Uh, what do you attribute that to? Um, to? Give anybody any credit, or is it just like a full team effort that you guys are working with? Uh, I would definitely say a full team effort. You know, all the guys are close in the bullpen. We talk every game, hang out, but like when your name's called, it's all business, and you get to work. Well, thank you so much, Adam. I appreciate it. Get some rest. Congratulations on the win. That'll do it for the Newport Goals postgame show. And the final score from Cardines Field, the Newport Goals 8 and the Danbury Westerners 2. Thank you so much for watching. Good night from Cardines.